Georgia Southern take on the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. And this is the first time since Georgia Southern began that Eric Russell will not be at a Tennessee Chattanooga football game. Buddy Nix is the head coach of UTC. His best year here, his first, 1984. Moccasins won the Southern Conference Championship, advancing to the playoffs. Just a week ago, Coach Nix earning a one-year contract extension. The Moccasins 5-4. and four. They play one of the top five schedules in Division I AA. Georgia Southern playing the most difficult schedule in the division. This is Nix's seventh year. His career record 34-40-1. And, and both these teams have two teams in common, of course. Middle Tennessee State. Both teams, Georgia Southern and the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, both lost to Middle Tennessee State, the Blue Raiders, and also Marshall. Both teams, Tennessee Chattanooga and Georgia Southern, defeated Marshall. I don't know exactly what that tells you, but that is the history. And both were by one touchdown late in the fourth quarter. The wins over Marshall. Don Norton will kick it off for Georgia Southern. Back deep for UTC. The Moccasins facing a must-win situation today. Sean Habersham and Mohamed Shamsuddin. This is Habersham deep in his own end zone and out of bounds. Two strong characteristics of Chamberlain Field, that wall at the end of one end zone and a tree in the other. Well, Stan Nix brings on the split back veer offense. Stan is a senior, played his high school football right here in Chattanooga. He is the son of head coach Buddy Nix. Older brother Steve, a former UTC wide receiver. Six touchdown passes for Stan this year, hitting on 42% of his passes. One problem though, 10 interceptions. He has run for a pair of scores. The running backs, James Roberts and Mohamed Shab Sadin. For McClendon, the tight end. Out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. Gain of nine. Nix to Derek McClendon. Sean Austin, a freshman quarter cornerback from Thomasville, knocks him out of bounds. Austin getting the, getting the start today in place of Kevin Whitley, so they go right at the untested freshman. And this is a surprise because we did not think University of Tennessee Chattanooga would use their tight ends much. They come out on the first play and go to their tight end. Sham Sedin for the first down, pickup of about four. Steve Busoletti in on the tackle for Georgia Southern. Let's take a look at the starters along that offensive front. Tommy Bonaparte, all six foot four, 330 pounds of them. The only junior, Duggar, Hill, Crisp, and Martin are seniors. Stan Nix, a senior, James Roberts, a sophomore, Sham Sedin, a speedy junior, Hadley, McClendon, and Tony Head are the wideouts. That's Roberts, a bruiser, pounding forward near the first down. Middle linebacker, Mike West, a senior from Roswell, Georgia, knocks him at the thighs, brings him down, shy of the first down, gain of about four. Check that. Fortunate spot, first and ten for the Moccasins, and they come out hot. The Georgia Southern defensive front, Busoletti, Parr, Tim Brown, who's having an outstanding season, and two-time All-American, Giff Smith. Maxwell, West, and Sickley, the linebackers. Whitley not getting the start today in the defensive backfield. Already we're getting a clinic on how to run the Veer offense. Muhammad Shamsuddin from Atlanta. He's a junior, has tremendous speed. Busting a 90-yarder just a week ago. Nix to Shamsuddin. Right up the middle, and we mentioned Shamsuddin is the speediest of the backs in that Veer backfield. James Roberts is the bruiser, and they'll go right at you. Tim Brown makes the tackle, big number 94, bringing up second down. Nix looking. McClendon overthrows and out of bounds. Good defensive coverage by Darius Dawson, the freshman linebacker from Moultrie. Also there coming up quickly, Sean Austin, the freshman defensive back who's filling in for Kevin Whitley because Whitley bruised his right shoulder this past week in practice. Sean Austin, a freshman from Thomasville, Georgia. Played his high school ball under offensive line coach Mike Hodges, who's now an assistant with Georgia Southern. Nick's on third down and six. Roberts has room. Up 
to the 32-yard line. Busting through tackles is James Roberts, the sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia. Tackle made by safety Jim Mutimer. Roberts running right over, right through Mark Giles, the other safety. Some good blocking by TC's offensive line, number 90. Patrick Parr almost got a hand on Roberts, but Roberts able to elude and pick up the big yardage. We mentioned he's a bruiser, but he can also run. Coach Tim Stowers talked about him being also a breakaway back. Right back to Roberts. A check that yep, right back to Roberts, and he is met hard by Steve Busoletti out of Gainesville, Georgia. Big thud. No breakaway on that play. Steve Busoletti right there in Roberts' face as soon as he touched the ball. Oh, hello. Roberts, the leading rusher on the team. First freshman in UTC history in the last 12, first in 12 years to rush for over 1,000 yards in his freshman season. He's already seventh all-time leading rusher in school history. Mix. Looking for McClendon at the 15, 10. Hauled down from behind by Michael Berry. Nick's had time. And the moccasins are inside the 10-yard line, down to the seven. With a little play action fake by Nix, he drops back, and Michael Berry, if you can see, he is all turned around, and McClendon, the easy catch, and he almost gets in the end zone. Good job by Rodney Oglesby of fighting off the blocker to make him take time to try to get in the end zone. First down at the seven, first possession of the game for UTC Roberts. Steve Busoletti wraps him up and goes for a ride. Roberts pounding ahead for a gain of three. Spot that ball just shy of the five. Derek, Mc Derek McClendon has become Stan Nick's favorite target. McClendon played fullback here for three years. He's from Elbert County High School in Elberton, Georgia. Second down at the five. Eugene Hayes substitutes in a middle linebacker, number 38 for Georgia Southern. Sham Sedin. Stacked up, Tim Brown, Giff Smith, Steve Busoletti unpiling. Tim Brown just will not get blown off the ball. He has really come on this year, probably the second strongest ball player on the Georgia Southern team. And you see Brown penetrating in the corner of your left screen. Well, you can't see it, but you see him there on the tackle. A good job as well by Steve Busoletti. And this is where Georgia Southern is known to get tough. After no gain, third down at the five. Sean Sedin up to the two. Down around his ankles is Michael Berry, a junior linebacker from Harper High School in Atlanta. Eugene Hayes, a reserve middle linebacker, also sticking his numbers in there. And we'll see goal line defense now for Georgia Southern on fourth and two. What a big Avery comes in with the play. Extra big man along the defensive wall for Georgia Southern. First possession of the game. Stan Nix marching that ball right down the field. Fourth down and two. Roberts. Georgia Southern holds. James Roberts runs right into the middle. Let's take a timeout. The Georgia Southern defense holds on fourth down. We're just underway. Georgia Southern will see the ball for the first time when we return to Chamberlain Field in Chattanooga. When you think of Georgia Southern's five-game winning streak, you think of the offense, but the defense makes a stand here right away in the first quarter. Take a look at this from ground level. Roberts right up the middle, and he is packed in by a bunch of Georgia Southern players. Joe Ross in the power eye irk ball formation. <laughs> Georgia Southern coming out and handing the ball. Check that. That's Alonzo McGee, not Joe Ross. My mistake in the power eye. First play that Georgia Southern handles the ball. That's Frank Sadler, the offensive coordinator, over there working with his offense. Raymond Gross, the senior quarter quarterback from Midway, Georgia, rolling as Ross has the room. Up to the 10 yard line. Squirts out of the handle of Albert Luke. Looks like he's out there to break the tackle. Tony Beck is credited with the tackle. That'll bring up third down and about two. Gain of six for Raymond Gross. 
had to be kind of frustrating for Chattanooga's offense to come out with such a good drive and then go for it on fourth and not get it. You almost hate to come away without any points. I may have kicked the field goal then. Raymond has run for three touchdowns, and he hands off to Joe Ross, who keeps his legs moving right over the pile, and it looks like he gets the first down. Let's take a look at the spot. Along the front wall for Georgia Southern, a vastly improved offensive line. Nottage has the best speed. He's a converted linebacker. Wilson, Parrish, Miguel Ayub, the redshirt freshman, and Smith. Raymond Gross is senior, as is Joe Ross. Hopkins and Miller are the slot backs. Terrence Sorrell and Daryl Bells are the split ends, although Carl Miller is the leading receiver on the team. Ross has room. Tries to make a cut. And as he does, he is cut down by Derek Willis, the free safety Delano that we talked about in the open of the game. Gain of eight by Joe Ross on first down. I tell you, we talked about the Billy Clanton Rusty Parrish matchup. You can't see it, but Rusty Parrish completely blew Billy Clanton back onto his back on that play. What a block by Rusty Parrish. Clanton, the big 300-pound nose man. Fumble. Raymond Gross slipping. We talked about the field conditions. Gross slipping as he tried to ride the belly of Joe Ross. Pulled it out. Tried to pull it out, but left the ball there mistakenly. And there you saw Billy Clanton on the play. That time he got the better of Rusty Parrish. So uh, I tell you what, it could be seesaw all day, back and forth between Rusty Parrish and Billy Clanton. That is the key matchup of the day. Closing quickly, Tony Hill, the senior left end. 6'7", 230 pounds. Raymond Gross, the ball stripped free. If he holds on, and it appears that he does, he may have the first down. Again, let's check the spot. And there it is, fortunate for Georgia Southern, and Joe Ross picks up the first down. You can see his frustration trying to hang on to the ball, and already we see muddy uniforms. And this will give you an idea of just the kind of player Billy Glanton is. We talked about him being so great. That time he was double teamed, and he still managed to get a hand on the ball and almost caused a fumble. The pitch. Daryl Hopkins slammed out of bounds at the 30 after a gain of four. Big pop by Truett Moss and Branch Drain. Want to go through the Chattanooga defense. There's Drain, Greenway, Willis, all three seniors. Jackie Washington is a junior, and all of those defensive backs have tremendous speed. UTC big along the front. Has tremendous speed on the skill positions, as does Georgia Southern. Second down and seven, Joe Ross. Slip sliding for a gain of maybe two, bringing up third down and four. Tackled by middle linebacker Truett Moss. He's a sophomore out of Calhoun, Georgia. And if you think the field was bad at the beginning of the game, wait until the end of the game. It was really messy there. And you can see it already affecting Georgia Southern's offense. They have slipped twice. Meanwhile, Tennessee Chattanooga used to this field. Maybe they have not slipped at all on that first drive. Clock on the move under eight minutes remaining first period. Gross has Sorrell. Complete for the first down up to the 45-yard line. Gain of 14 on the connection. Well, when you talk to a lot of the coaches that Georgia Southern plays against, they'll talk about Raymond Gross immediately about what a fine passer he has become. He's worked on it during the offseason, and he has indeed become better. He threaded the needle that time and put it where you wanted it to be, near the ground for Terrence Sorrell to catch. Joe Ross. Right at the heart of the defense, Troy Beck, senior preseason Southern Conference Player of the Year pick, right there to make the tackle. Raymond Gross has seven touchdown passes this year, hitting on 55% of his connections. Has three interceptions, one of those, however, on a Hail Mary pass, and he also has three touchdown runs and playing some of the best football of his career. Gross, ball is loose. Georgia Southern hops on it. Carl Miller makes the recovery. That has been a factor for Raymond Gross. The Eagles have only lost one fumble in the last five games. Nearly. Boy, this one was out there for whomever could get to it first. There you see Derek Willis. We told you he's that mirror image. He's the shadow of Raymond Gross today. He comes up and makes the tackle. Georgia Southern been fortunate as far as pouncing on the ball so far. Looks like John Thompson made the key hit. On third down, the defensive line of UTC comes up big. And that 
that'll bring up fourth down and bring on Georgia Southern punter Terry Harvin. Freshman middle linebacker Shingo Weems credited with the stop. He leads the team in tackles and shares the team lead in interceptions. Harvin, plenty of time. High spiral. Out of bounds. Beautiful punt. Takes a sideways hop at the seven. Out of bounds. Gorgeous punt by senior Terry Harvin. And we're still just underway. First period, six minutes remaining from Chattanooga with no score. We now join the Ohio State Iowa game. We Off the field, Kevin Whitley, who did not start the ball game, comes back on. UTC doing it on the ground, not through the air so far, but junior Kevin Whitley from Lakeside High School in Atlanta, normal starter in there. Screen set up, Nix takes a big pop from Steve Busiletti, and he gets up feeling some aches. Incomplete and intended for tight end Derek McClendon. Stan Nix took a shot from junior defensive end Steve Busiletti, and he's gonna have to come off the field. Vince Corelli is the backup quarterback, a junior from Nashville, Tennessee. And yeah, he's over there talking with Frank Sadler on the sidelines, the offensive coordinator, and he'll have to come out. Maybe we can get another look at that. Steve Busiletti blew right by his man and really delivered a shot. Stan Nix probably just got the wind knocked out of him. But he was wide open. Take a look at the replay. There you see him at the tail end of the play. Boy, he takes a shot, and he falls back on his back. Usually you see the quarterbacks go face for it when they fall down. When you fall backwards, you leave your stomach, and your he probably has a little stomach. Torelli has a pair of touchdown passes this year. Way short on his first play. He comes out throwing. The intended receiver is Sammy Hadley, the starting flanker from Lake Wales, Florida. Vince Corelli has a pair of punch touchdown passes, has been picked off eight times this year, is hitting on 38% of his passes. And that'll bring on probably the best player in this game, Pumpy Tudors, a junior punter, All-American a year ago, led the nation, averaging 45 a punt this year. Saw that long of 77. He is second in the nation, however, so far this year, and that 45 yards of boot is two yards better than his average from a year ago. But He's a good story, and he's a tremendous athlete. Tudors from his 35. Terrence Finley back there, fair catch inside the 10. How about that? Pumpy Tudors on cue. Lays it inside the five-yard line. Gorgeous punt. 65-yard boot. Let's take a break. Three minutes remaining in the first period. Dan Nix, the senior quarterback for UTC, on a stretcher on the sideline. When I said it looked like he had the wind knocked out of him, easy for me to say, he looks hurt. Georgia Southern taking over for the second time, second possession this game. Joe Ross met by Glanton immediately. Big pop. Back at his one-yard line for a loss of three. Billy Glanton, 300-pounder from Cottonwood, Alabama. Man, what a pop. And he is fired up. He gets the best of Rusty Parrish here, no doubt about it. And he meets Joe Rodgers and says, hey, that's a Holiday Inn wake-up call. Hello, baby. <laughs> Glanton, a 300-pounder, quick off the snap, quick to the dinner table. He was the youngest of nine children. Got to be quick off the draw. From their own end zone, from the one with that power eye set up in the own with their own end zone. Second down. Ross. Shingo Weems, the middle linebacker for UTC, is there, along with a couple of teammates. Check that, Alonzo McGee back in the power eye instead of Joe Ross. Nearing the two-minute mark of the first period. With Stan Nix going down, now he's up. Number seven with his back to us. He's warming up off the stretcher now. And here's Alonzo McGee operating out of the power eye. Quick snap to Terry Harvin. A flag and a whistle. Quick snap by Georgia Southern. The ball down to the 30. Harvin pleading his case. They had that set up. A quick kick by Harvin and Georgia Southern, and we're interested in the explanation from Dan Woolridge, our referee. Raymond Gross is out on the field. I don't even know what to signal for. Needed burning. <laughs> Perhaps he did not. Inadvertent whistle, inadvertent whistle, replay the down. 
inadvertent whistle. A mistake by the officials, in other words, should not have happened. Georgia Southern had that one set up and took advantage of just a heady move by Tim Stowers, the head coach. That's a break for the homestanding UTC Moccasins, a big break. That ball dead back at the 30-yard line. Raymond Gross on third down. Picks up two, but that's not nearly enough. Lee Femley, rather Lee Femley out there, along with Shingo Weems, creating problems, and Georgia Southern hustles on with the punt unit, and UTC has to hustle off with the defense. Harvin from his own end zone. Plenty of time. Short. Fair catch, Sammy Hadley right at midfield. Georgia Southern coach Tim Stower says he fears a game of field position. He fears matching punter per punter because Pumpy Tudors really has a leg for Chattanooga. So far, a defensive struggle on Georgia Southern's behalf because their defense has been out on the field throughout this first quarter. Let's take a look at the injury. Knicks, Stan Knicks right back in there at the starting lineup. For Georgia Southern, Rodney Oglesby back in there at cornerback. This is Roberts with a blocker. The Georgia Southern defense rising up for a loss of two. Shane Maxwell out there. Paul Sickley, Giff Smith, and Michael West. Perhaps Georgia Southern just a little bit upset about the inadvertent whistle call. It just about cost them the 10 yards because on the quick kick, the ball probably would have ended up about the 35-yard line. And after the third down, they kicked it only to the 45-yard line. So Georgia Southern fired up on that first offensive play for the Mocs. James Roberts, the sophomore running back out of Valdosta High School in Georgia. You see Nick with the count. Patrick Parr comes straight in. He misses the offensive lineman, misses the block. Patrick Parr, an easy tackle. If Parr wouldn't have gotten the runner, then perhaps three or four more Georgia Southern Eagles would have because they had great penetration on that play. Third down and 12 at the 48. Nick. In and out of the hands of Sammy Hadley, the sophomore. Would have been shy of the first down. Kevin Whitley over there defending, and that's good to see because he's been injured this week. That'll bring up fourth down, and that'll bring on Pumpy Tudors for the second time this afternoon. Just six seconds remaining in the first period. On his first boot today, Tudors launched it about 50 yards. Terrence Finley, the junior college transfer, back at his 10 for Georgia Southern. Offside, Sean Austin. Wobbly boot. Finley going to let this one hit shy of the 20. Down to the 21-yard line. But with the penalty flag down, we'll have to replay the down. There's the preliminary indication. May have heard the horn go off, signifying the end of the first period. If they replay it, that'll be an untimed down. Captain Chris Evans, a linebacker of the special teams out there for UTC to accept that penalty. So we will see Tudors once more. Let's listen. No, 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 no. All sides on the defense. We'll repeat the down, and it's an untimed down. Not with the penalty. Not with the penalty. Dan Woolridge is the commissioner of the Old Dominion Athletic Conference, a longtime ACC basketball official. Also worked a great deal of games in the Southern Conference. Look for a fake here. Nope. Tudors. Again, Wobbly. Finley coming up hard. Takes it on the run at the 18-yard line. Was there contact? There was not. Let's take a network timeout. 
fun period of play behind us. There's no score and a defensive struggle from Chattanooga. Raymond Gross on the first play of the second quarter. Wild pitch, Carl Miller. Stop shy of the 20 yard line. John Thompson comes up to make the stop. A backup corner. He's from Repton, Alabama, sophomore, 190 pounder. Raymond Gross had company in his backfield. He was trying to turn the corner to pick something up, and then when he turned the corner, he saw a bunch of blue jerseys, so he decided to pitch, and it was a very dangerous pitch. A good job by Carl Miller to control it. UTC controlling that first quarter on the ground. Gross ad living has room, but getting pressure. Unloads deep. This is Belser. And complete. Thompson again defending the cornerback from Alabama. Troy Beck getting pressure on Raymond Gross in the backfield. And you see Thompson doing a good job of coming back to the ball. Belfer comes back to the ball also, and that's important because he prevents an interception. Sometimes, even when you can't make the catch as a wide receiver, you have to come back, and then in turn, you become the defensive back, while the defensive back becomes the wide receiver. So a good play of defensing the pass by Darrell Belfer that time. UTC's defensive front winning the battle so far against Georgia Southern's offensive line. Joe Rice, knocked down by Tony Hill, the left end. That brings up fourth down and a, lo and a loss of four. Fourth down and 14. Tony Hill, a six-foot, seven-inch senior. And you want to see a good job of stringing out the option, that's how you do it. Number 48, Cedric, Cedric Greenway, Greenway did a tremendous job of coming over and stopping the play. Terry Harbin's boot into the face of that win, a stiff breeze. Blown dead, shy of the 50-yard line. It looked like Jason Whitehead, a junior from Marietta, Georgia, dancing out of the way of that short punt. Excellent, excellent field position. By far the best field position of the day for UTC. And with the way they've been moving the ball, it could be uh, lights out for Georgia Southern on this drive. Jay with University of Tennessee Chattanooga doing a good job of controlling the ball, and they should have a big chunk of time of possession when we check it at halftime. Knicks looking deep. Complete. Tony Head at the 10-5. Touchdown, Chattanooga. His third touchdown catch of the season, and UTC jumps on top with 13 minutes remaining in the first half. 42 yards, Stan Nix to Tony Head, the junior from Warner Robins, Georgia, from Northside High School, Warner Robins. What a tremendous job of the play fake by Stan Nix. He drops back, and Head is doing a middle route. Coming across, the other wide receivers have cleared out. He's got plenty of room in the middle, and then he just outruns Mark Giles to the end zone. Nix on the hold. Boots it through. And with 13 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first period, UTC gets on the board, cashing in on that excellent field position. We'll be back from Chattanooga. Champs find themselves behind by a touchdown midway through the first half. Tony Head on the Receiving end of that 42-yard strike. Let's give Stan Nix credit. He's knocked out of the game in the first quarter. Gets back up and delivers a 42-yard strike to head. That drive, 12 seconds, one play, covering 42 yards. Rod Godoy the, will handle the kickoff for UTC. Back deep is Carl Miller. Miller at his four. Has room. 30. And dancing out of bounds. He ran all the way to the other side of the field, ran a long way for about a 26-yard return. Chuck Hill, cornerback, knocks him out of bounds at the 30. 
Excellent field position. Knicks, 42 yards, just one play. UTC's offense on the move, but their defensive front is dominating this ball game so far. Pitch. Hopkins at the 40. At midfield has a block. 35. Out of bounds across the 35 up to the 32-yard line. Chased out of bounds by Cedric Greenway, a senior from Noonan, Georgia. And before the kickoff, I saw Miller and Hopkins slapping each other's hands, saying, let's go look at the block by Hopkins right there to spring, excuse me, by Miller to spring Hopkins. You'll see it here better in the left corner of your screen, and that would spring Hopkins. Hopkins, a good job of tight roping the sideline for the big game. Greenway is a senior. His brother, Willie, a former moccasin linebacker. Father, Willie Sr., played for the New Orleans Saints, a tight end for the Saints again out of Noonan. Maybe a loss of one on first down. <laughs> we talked about Carl Miller making a good block on the last play. Well, that time he missed his block, and consequently the play went nowhere. Talked about Billy Glanton, the 300-pound nose man, and Troy Beck, the tackle, but also Tony Hill, the left end, six foot seven, 230 pound. That's why we can turn around and see one, two, three, four NFL scouts behind us. Also talked with Falcons Vice President Ken Herrick earlier today. Wide open, Belser at the 17. First down for Georgia Southern. Gain of 15 on the connection. John Thompson, the cornerback, makes the hit. Well, this is something we don't see Georgia Southern do very much. Go backside. The backside receiver has got to run his route, even if he doesn't think the ball is going to come to him, because sooner or later, one day, Raymond Gross will have his eye on you. Daryl Belser, a good job of concentration on that catch. Tickets for the Division I AA National Championship. Gross getting pressure in a hurry. Glanton and Hill. And who else? Joe Brunson right there in the backfield. Tickets for the Division I AA National Championship game are on sale. You can order your tickets right now. You can call from home, 1-800-544-2798. Operators are on duty right now to take your order. Last year, about 25,000 fans jammed Paulson Stadium in Statesboro for the championship game. You can call that number, 800-544-2798, to order your tickets. Second down and 12. Gross again mishandles. Ross met at the 30. Albert Luke, the right end, makes the stop. He's from Birmingham, 6'2", 220, has outstanding speed. Luke runs a 4'5", 40. Well, that time, Joe Ross made a good play of getting away from Nottich, who is really winning the battle against Rusty Paris right now. But look, look at Luke. He's right there to make the tackle. So right now, all the defensive linemen and linebackers are winning the battle against Georgia Southern's offensive line. Eagles may have to throw here on third and 12 and throughout the game. Blitz is on. Gross has Sorrell open in the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. It doesn't get any better than that. What a pass by Raymond Gross. And you see Raymond Gross rolling to the right, and he lobs it perfectly to the corner of the end zone. That's called a post-corner pattern, and Daryl Belser, excuse me, Terrence Sorrell did a tremendous job of executing. Mike Dallas on for the extra point. No! Shanks it. Mike Dallas had a string of 25 consecutive PATs broken. With 11 minutes remaining, Georgia Southern could have tied it up. We'll come back. We've got a good game here in Chattanooga. A minute and a half after Chattanooga takes the lead, 7 0. Georgia Southern bounces back with a touchdown, but Mike Dallas, the senior from Country Day School in Savannah, this is a rare miss. You can see the frustration there. A rare miss by Dallas, and so the Eagles trail by a point. Terrence Sorrell collecting his third touchdown pass, 19 yards. Sorrell averaging 25 yards a catch this year. 
did not have one touchdown catch until a week ago. So <laughs> Raymond really hooking up with Sorrell, who has become his favorite target. All right, 11 minutes remaining in the first half. Don Norton set the kickoff. Loose ball at the 12. Donnie Suber is back there to bring it down. On the return, Jerry Ellison, a freshman from Augusta. Had trouble with the handle, and already we're seeing the wet surface come in and play a factor. You know what's bad when you see the kicker? Don Norton hits the turf. He slipped before he even got a foot, and he did a good job to get the ball off as far as he did. Ellison from Glen Hills High School and Augusta. There's the scoring drive. Six plays in less than two and a half minutes. Gross to Terrence Sorrell for his eighth touchdown pass of the year. Roberts, Matt Hard, maybe a gain of three. Mike West sticking his head and shoulder pads in there. Jim Mutimer also. Michael Berry also involved. Some good hitting and good defensive football already. Because UTC really scans the state of Georgia, and Buddy Nix, the coach, admits they recruit hard, first and foremost, in Georgia for a lot of ties today. Ellison played at West Hills High School in Augusta, as did Daryl Belser. Joe Ross of Georgia Southern, also from Augusta. He played at Westside High School. Roberts from Valdosta. There's a connection there as well. Nix still on his feet, out of bounds. Mohamed Shamsuddin out of Atlanta. Let's see where that spot is. Gene Scott makes the hit. Tennessee Chattanooga taking advantage of Georgia Southern's upfield pursuit, doing the uh, screens very well right now. That's the second one they've run today, and both have been successful. Might have been a clip there on Michael Berry. He got hit from behind. Might have been a clip. First and 10 for UTC. Stan Nix. Batted. Picked off Kevin Whitley. At the 30. 30 at the 30 yard line. And chased in from behind. Tony Head makes the tackle. Kevin Whitley did not start today. He had a bruised right shoulder, but he comes on and late in the first half picks off his second interception of the year. And defensive backs, when they practice, they go through a drill called the tip drill, and this is where it pays off. The ball batted once, twice, and Kevin Whitley, Johnny on the spot. And I look at this field. He slips there. He could have broken a play there. He slips again, trying to cut back the other way. It is really in back position, but a great play by Kevin Whitley. Gross has room. Slippery making a cut. Across the 20-yard line, knocked down shy of the first down. Gain of eight. Tackle made by Troy Beck and Branch Drain, the defensive back. And Phil, this brings new words to being a slippery back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Raymond Gross, another slip there. It is really terrible, and you can almost sense an injury getting ready to come because it is really terrible in the middle of the field. Gross, press the 10 yard line inside the line. five first and ten or first and goal rather branch drain the senior defensive back saves a touchdown and we talked about rex nottage or rusty parish against billy glanton that time a good block you can tame billy glanton and chances are the option has at least a 85 percent chance of working alonzo mcgee out of the power eye Lunging across the right side, running behind senior guard John Wilson and sophomore right tackle Rex Nottage. Maybe a gain of one. Raymond Gross doing it all by himself. Running and throwing. In the five-game winning streak, he has really been in command. The team has only lost one fumble in the last five games. 16th in the nation and passing efficiency. McGee, Gross is gonna keep it. Fighting forward at the goal line, stopped. Jackie Washington stands him up at the one. Love to see if he breaks the plane. It looked like he was shy, however. 
Raymond Gross out on the option. He elects to keep it himself, hopping over players, cutting back what a true option quarterback should do. And then he struggles to get in. Maybe a little bit more lifting weights, and he could have bowled his way backwards into the end zone. Raymond Gross has run for three touchdowns. Now he has Joe Ross in the eye, up and in. Eagles take the lead. Tennessee Chattanooga would like to meet Joe Ross up in the air. The defensive player missed going towards Joe Ross's knees. Ross vaults over the top for the touchdown. Well, Mike Dallas back out there trying to start another streak. Hold by Harvin. Easy does it, and it's good. Well, Georgia Southern puts a pair of touchdowns on the board in less than three minutes. And with eight minutes remaining in the first half, Eagles lead 13 to 7. Midway through the first half, eight minutes remaining from Chamberlain Field. Eagles take the lead, and they do so on this play. Well, it's simple. Irk ball, as they call it. Joe Ross going to go straight at you over the top. And you want to meet him as far as the defense is concerned at the point of attack. And Cedric Greenway that time took the wrong angle. And Joe Ross was able to make it over for the touchdown. That's the 12th touchdown of the year for Joe Ross, the senior fullback out of Augusta. After tonight, Georgia Southern closing out the regular season at home against Terry Bowden's Samford Bulldogs. One o'clock kickoff. Buddy Nix will then travel to Western Kentucky and take on the Hilltoppers in Bowling Green. Ball is loose on the ground again. Up to the 15 and in a pile. Jerry Ellison makes has, Jerry Ellison on the return. Well, here's a shocking final score. Florida drubs Georgia. You're not going to believe this. What was the score again? 38? 38 to 7. On the scoring drive, they do it in just over a minute and a half. Five plays, 25 yards. Joe Ross, one yard up and in. Georgia falling to four and five on the year. Tough times up in Athens. Steve Spurrier really has a club, though, and they're playing well. Roberts popped at the 15, but he keeps on going up to the 20. Tim Brown. Jim Mutimer brings down Roberts. Big collision. Accommodations provided by the Kings Lodge Motel. Accommodations fit for a king. 2400 West Side Drive in Chattanooga. For reservations in state, call 1 800 572 7656. Out of state, 800 251 7702. Muhammad Shamsuddin squirting forward, shy of the 25 yard line. Paul Sickley, the linebacker from Dalton, makes the stop. It's a rare game for Sickley. Family only has to drive about 20 minutes. He and backup receiver Chuck McClurg from just across the state line. Dalton really a football hotbed there in Dalton High School in Whitfield County. That town was one of the best kept secrets in the nation until the Donald and the Marla. Ah, <laughs> that's her hometown. Sham Sedin on third down and short. Gets the first down and more at the 40. Tripped up by Sickley, or else he is off to the races. And we see a glimpse of his breakaway speed. First down for the Moccasins. The pitch from Nixon, Shamsuddin gets a chance to turn the corner, and when he cuts back, you can see, yeah, I believe it. He has got some speed. Unfortunately, tripped up just a little bit by Jim Butimer, enough to slow him down and stop the play, but Sh Shamsuddin is really fast. I mean, he can go. That's Sickley down on the turf, a junior. 5'11", 190, coming off the best game of his career. Had his first interceptions and in double figures in tackles a week ago. And Shamsuddin flashing those slick moves, but Sickley gets a hand down around the ankles and brings him down. Really made Darius Dawson look kind of bad there on the corner. 
Sickly shaking it off on the far sideline here at Chamberlain Field. Just over seven minutes remaining in the first half of what has been called a must-win game for the Moccasins and maybe must-win for Georgia Southern. Strength of their schedule would be a big factor to consider when we talk playoffs. Sham Sedin has a hole. Michael Berry involved in the tackle, as is middle linebacker Michael West and the other outside linebacker Shane Maxwell, who's from Winder, Georgia. Second down and six after the gain of four. So far in this series, we've seen just Shamsuddin carry the ball, but throughout the season, Roberts and Shamsuddin have carried it just about the same amount of times. Coming into this game, 130 carries for James Roberts, 114 for Shamsuddin. So you can expect either one of them to get it at any time. Adley and Head split to the top of the screen. Eric Carter straight ahead near the first down. Carter, a sophomore from Jefferson City, Tennessee. 190 pounds, 5'10". Does not see that much action because of Roberts. Steve Busoletti credited with the tackle. Straight handoff, Carter, of course, filling in for Roberts at the moment. Carter, a good job of filling in, going right up the middle and running tough. He's not your flashy back. He's just a back that gets in there and relieves people and does a good job, as a matter of fact. Pitch back to Carter. Met by Michael Berry for a loss, and that'll bring up fourth down. Michael Berry from Harper High School in Atlanta pursues quickly, gets penetration, and makes the stop. And the person who made this play was Mike West coming from his linebacker position. He forced Nix to pitch it quicker than expected, and Carter had nowhere to go over there on the sideline. Pumpy Tudor's back for his third punt of the afternoon from the 35. Terrence Finley gonna let that one fly into the end zone. Five minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the first half. 51 yards into the end zone. 51 yards on the boot. It's his best effort of the day, averaging 45 a game. Tudor's an All-American. Well, Georgia Southern will take over at the 20. Raymond Gross leading the team apparently back into the playoffs to defend that title. A winning streak of five in a row, trying to stretch it to six. And the Eagles out in front, 13 to seven. Joe Ross has a blocker at the 30. Up to the 36-yard line. Gain of 15. Jerome well, Harris, the linebacker, makes the stop. Jerome Harris makes the tackle. Down in the backfield for Georgia Southern. Let's see the offensive lineman. We'll have to count bodies. That's Rusty Parrish, the center. Ladies and gentlemen, please check your program. Can't Couldn't see it see on the replay. Not Difficult not to see because of the isolation on Ross and on Raymond Gross. On Rusty Parrish, a sophomore from Thomasville. Check your game program. We've emphasized what a key matchup that he is. Parrish against Blanton in the front of the UTC defense. If he comes out, and it appears that he will, Scott Chafin, a redshirt freshman from Norman Park, Georgia, will come in. Tim Stower standing out there. We'll certainly have to keep an eye on that. That would be a big turnabout in the game. Chafin having to go up against the likes of Billy Glanton, and Glanton has been giving the starting center, Paris, pure, pure devilish emotions all day because Paris Paris part of that improvement along the offensive front. And a big reason, that improvement, a great reason why the Eagles have won the last four in a row. Well, as we can check out and see the trees, the leaves turning here, and Chattanooga, that means basketball season's right around the corner. Georgia Southern will play two exhibition games next week. Thursday night, Eagles take on the AAU St. Petersburg Green Wave. Saturday night, they take on the traveling team from Australia, the Newcastle Falcons. Eagles will open the regular season November 24 at home against Missouri Valley Power, Powerhouse Bradley. Tickets for all games you can order 1-800-544-2798. Darrell Hopkins 
takes a pop, picks up the first down. He hangs on. Jackie Washington delivers some punishment after he makes the reception. You know, I tell you, I saw the Chattanooga defensive players on the sideline saying, hey, take that pop. But hey, the fact of the matter is, Hopkins held on to the ball, and that is a victory no matter how hard the pop is for the offense. Joe Ross trying to run right behind fresh center Scott Chafin with very little luck. Tony Schultz involved in it. We'll have to keep an eye and just see how Chafin, fa Chafin fares along the front wall. You know, we haven't said enough yet about Tony Hill, the left end for Chattanooga. We talked about some of the pro scouts here today. I can turn around behind me and see the notepads and field glasses and stopwatches. He runs a 4-7, 40-yard dash. Was also recruited here to play basketball, but has stuck with football. That's Tony Hill from Pemac, Georgia. Well, the Eagles want to call a timeout. Raymond Gross with 4-14 remaining. Eagles in front, 13-7, and on the move. We're in Chattanooga for a game between the defending national champs and the Tennessee Chattanooga Moccasins who are trying to stay alive in the playoff chase. With three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Well, that's only the second fumble lost by Georgia Southern in the last five games, and that has been one of the reasons they have stretched that winning streak up to five. Darrell Hopkins out on the corner. Good job of blocking by Darrell Belser. Hopkins cuts it up, and he just loses it as he is going down on the turf. We wanted to mention the Eastern Kentucky score. Colonels playing Marshall this afternoon and leading. Let's see who's down on the field. That looks like Daryl Hopkins. It is Eastern Kentucky leading Marshall 15-12 with three minutes remaining in the fourth period. This game crucial for the Thundering Herd. Let's take another look at this play. Hopkins had room, but then coughs the ball up. And look at the lick Raymond Gross takes right there from Jerry Ellison. Daryl Hopkins, perhaps this is the reason he's down on the turf, why he fumbled the ball, because his legs are cut from under him. He's stretched out. Thank you, Mr. Ward. And as a consequence, he fumbled the ball. Looks like Derek Willis forces the fumble, and Washington picks it up. Boy, talk about a physical football game already. Stan Nix helped off the field for Tennessee Chattanooga, and Daryl Hopkins becomes the third eagle who needs some assistance to get off the field. Field position at the 46-yard line. Stan Nix with Muhammad Shamsuddin and Eric Carter in the backfield. Shamsuddin faking the reverse. Curtis Gordon has a hand, slips free. Up across midfield and into Eagle territory, Jim Mutimer makes the stop. Gain of six, that'll bring up second down. And a good job by Curtis Gordon of stringing out the play. Look at him, he looks pretty fast there, chasing down the speedy Shamsadine. Shamsadine just avoids the tackle and picks up three or four yards. James Roberts back in the lineup. This is Shamsadine once again. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage, freshman Alex Mash from Thomasville, number 99. And Curtis Gordon converging on the stop. Let's also give Tim Brown credit. He gets up, favoring a knee. Tim Brown does not get a lot of publicity, Delano, but man, does he play his position well on the field. It's not flashy, had five solo tackles. That's not a huge stat, but for an offensive lineman, five solo tackles is a lot. And he really is a force in there on the front, controlling the center two guards of the opposition. That's right. Roberts, squirting forward, first down. Nice read by Stan Nix. After giving it up to James Robert, he takes a lick from Gip Smith, the defensive end for Georgia Southern. And you know, we talked about all the pro scouts being here looking at Tony Hill, where they're also, I'm sure, keeping an eye 
on Tim Brown because he is a legitimate pro prospect, as well as Carl Miller and Joe Ross for Georgia Southern. Sham Sadin nearly 50 yards already on 10 carries. Knicks looking right into that sun, batted down, nicely played by Kevin Whitley. Looks like he gets a hand on it. Did you Sammy Hadley, the man for whom that pass was intended. Did you say something about Kevin Whitley being hurt before this game? <laughs> Give me a break. Look at the job he does of coming up on the little hitch pattern and getting a hand on the ball. Whitley having a tremendous afternoon already with an interception and a couple of pass breakups. He's not hurt. He was shamming this week. <laughs> Two and a half minutes remaining in the second period. Roberts on the delay. Sure tackle by Tim Brown. Maybe a gain of two. Jack Harris, a senior from Miami, also in on the stop. Brings up third down and seven after the pickup of three. James Roberts played his high school ball at Valdosta for Nick Hyder. Last night, the Cats beat rival Lowndes. They'll defend their 4A state championship. Carlos Parker, who succeeded Roberts, is at Georgia Southern waiting out this freshman year. Oh, that's intercepted. Oh, is it a reception? Right into the hands of Michael West. Flag down. There is a flag on the play. Eric Carter caught the, the deflected pass. He's shy of the first down. Let's check out the flag. Holding. Kevin Whitley playing <laughs> official for Georgia Southern. He says holding against UTC, and the Eagles will decline. Holding by the offense, declined. Fourth down. No doubt about the holding call. Number 99, Alex Mash coming in untouched, and he is grabbing. You can't see it on the screen, but it was. And Mike West almost came away with a big interception, and he had nothing but daylight around the right end. From his 50, from the 50, Tudors with his fourth punt of the afternoon. Terrence Finley, oh my, at the goal line, batted back. Let's see where the officials down this. This could be inside the one. Now they're going to take the spot at the seven. Minute and a half remaining in the first half. Let's take a look at it again. The save right at the goal line, Tony Head. Also there back in the back, Matt Hilke, an offensive lineman from here in Chattanooga. Delano, I thought they had that thing down inside the five, but possession established at the seven or rather at the eight. Fortunate spot for Georgia Southern with a minute and a half remaining. Gross has room to run. At the 15, backing up. Weaving his way up to the 20. Gain of 11, first down for Georgia Southern. You know, Remy Gross waves that ball around like a uh, matador <laughs> against a bull. If you watch Wayman Gross as he goes around right in. Watch the ball. It's almost as if he's hiding it. Watch this. Here it is. He sticks it back. Look at that. Oh, give me a break. And look how he abuses the defensive players on that play. Cutting back, and he slips again right there before he made his last cut. It's slippery all over the field now. We thought it would be limited to just the middle of the field, but now even down on the other end, Georgia Southern's side of the uh, field, it is slippery there as well. You'll want to stick with us at halftime. We'll have a pair of guests here. Dave Hart, Commissioner of the Southern Conference, and Bucky Wagner, Athletic Director, Georgia Southern, the host school for the championship game. We will hash out the field of 16 with one week remaining. The field of 16, the playoff field in Division I AA. We'll do that at halftime. Joe Ross has a dirty uniform, difficult to pick up his number 36. He's seen plenty of action here in the first half. Sean McMahon, a transfer from the Air Force, a linebacker, makes the stop brings up second down no gain for ross and phil if this is any indication of exactly how joe ross's knee has come along usually when it's cold your knee will be aching a lot more but joe ross looks fine here today he's cutting and especially on this wet turf gross picks up 49 yards he's been busy with 10 carries to the short side just going to accept the loss. Albert Luke is in there quickly. Never had a chance to exercise the option. Clock on the move at 20 seconds remaining in the first half. 
Clock is stopped by UTC with Georgia Southern facing third down and 11. It is number 10, UTK 6. Raymond Gross along the sideline talking it over for this big third down play. He's probably saying, gee, coach, can we do something about the field? Maybe uh, uh, bring some straw and put it on the uh, middle of the field because it is really snicking. You hate to keep harping on it, but really, it, it's really hurting Georgia Southern's option offense because that offense revolves around getting out, making the turns, making the cuts, and Georgia Southern just not able to do it on certain plays. And it's only going to get worse, not going to get better for Tim Stars or for Buddy Nick's club. Here's a good note for Georgia Southern. Rusty Parrish, the starting center, is back in there. A sophomore from Thomasville, Parrish, was helped off the field about five minutes ago. Again, we'll have Dave Hart and Bucky Wagner with us at halftime to take a look at the field of 16 in the playoffs for Division I AA. Raymond Gross getting pressure and going down. And that brings up fourth down. Terry Harvin punting from deep in his own territory. Sean McMahon credited with the sack. 13 seconds remaining in the first half. Sean McMahon transferring from the Air Force Academy out in Colorado Springs. It's a windy day like today, like he would have had out there in the Rockies. Sammy Hadley sets up back at midfield. A nice return. And we should see the field goal unit, Rodney Allen, for UTC. Moccasin's trying to milk this clock just before the break. Looks as if, Phil, University of Tennessee Chattanooga might come with a rush here and try to get Harbin before he gets it off. Ten men up. Harbin from three yards deep in his end zone. Gets it off, high, ball dying against the breeze. Adley, fair catch, right at the 47-yard line. Well, Nick's hit Tony Head 42 yards. Tony yard, Nick's hit Tony Head 42 yards for the Moccasin touchdown early in the game. This play set up at the 46, Stan Nix. Back out on the field after he was knocked out earlier in the game. So keep an eye on the split ends. Good speed for the UTC wideouts. We have Habersham, Hadley, and Acre at the bottom of the screen. Sean Habersham, the quickest, with a 4-3-40 at the bottom of the screen. Nix puts it up. Mutimer is there. And that's the end of the first half. Georgia Southern comes from behind. Going on a pair of touchdowns in the second quarter in the span of only three minutes. Got a player down on the field for Georgia Southern, and we'll take a look at that when we come back for halftime festivities. Or check that, we'll stay right here. Halftime getting underway in Chattanooga at Chamberlain Field. Georgia Southern trying to extend that winning streak from five games to six. And as we see the activity out on the field and the concern by the Georgia Southern coaches, let's take this time out. We'll be back from halftime for halftime from Chattanooga after this. Well, let's take a look at the first half and what was a hard hitting, well played, mistake free and evenly played first half. First score of the game, Stan Nix goes deep. Right across the middle to the receiver. A perfect job of running the middle route by Tony Head. He makes the catch and he outruns Mark Giles. And he has nowhere to go but toward the end zone. And with 13 minutes remaining in the first period, in the second quarter rather, Georgia Southern bounces right back. Certainly Raymond mentioned Gross. that uh, Raymond Gross, it doesn't get any better than this. Look at this ball. It's perfectly thrown. You want to throw that down and out pattern towards the, red, the orange cone there, and that's exactly what Raymond Gross did and let Terrence Sorrell run under it. Three and a half minutes later, or at less than three and a half minutes later, Joe Ross up and over, and after trailing seven to nothing, Georgia Southern comes back to take the lead, 13 to seven here at halftime. Take a look at the statistics of the first half. Pumpy Tudors has been one of the feature performers. He's had four boots, but the statistics very evenly matched, although Tennessee Chattanooga leads in, in pass yards passing a key stat and total yards so far. 
This really is amazing. You don't see this much. First downs, 10 apiece. I thought Georgia Southern would be lagging as far as possession was concerned, but they got some of that back in the second quarter with the long drive to go ahead, 13 to 7. But as you mentioned, Phil, everything is just about basically the same. The turnovers, one fumble for Georgia Southern, one interception for Tennessee Chattanooga. The running backs for UTC out of the split back veer, Mohammed Shamsuddin and James Roberts have 49 yards each so far. Nix has 102 yards in the air passing. Well, Rod Godoy tees it up at his 35. What a fascinating story he is. A high school transfer, a high school foreign exchange student from Sao Paulo, Brazil, plays high school ball at Chickamauga, Georgia, just across the state line here from Chattanooga. He's a freshman, and he'll be booting it away. Georgia Southern finally back out on the field, and going back deep will be Carl Miller, one of the top five return men in Division I AA. That's the fourth-ranked, fourth-highest-ranked return unit on kickoffs. Miller also leads the team in receptions, and he's the third-leading runner on Georgia Southern. That's why many teams, Phil, as we mentioned, just don't kick it to Carl Miller. Every time I've seen him catch the ball back there, He's broken it for a big game. Of course, the touchdown against Central Florida that was called back. He really is a dangerous return man. And let's keep an eye on Godoy as he kicks the ball off because he is in the middle of that wet spot of the field, exactly the worst part of that field, as a matter of fact. Stan Nix warming up with this backup, Vince Corelli. Nix knocked out of the game in the first half. Carl Miller, a fascinating story from College Park, Georgia. We should call him Carl Jr. We never do. Nice article a week ago by Ernie Reese of the Atlanta Constitution Journal on the Miller family. Carl is uh, married and a father. Carl Jr. is married and a father. Bree starting to pick up now here as we see long shadows and we have the lights on at Chamberlain Field. Godoy teeing it back up again and we're underway in the second half. Miller on the run at the eight. 20. Dancing, 25. Dancing out of bounds across the 25 up to the 27-yard line. William Ransby, a wide receiver, chases him out of bounds. We talked about Carl Miller. He has a little son, Carl the Third. And while <laughs> Carl and his wife are doing homework <laughs> from Georgia Southern, Carl the Third, Delano, watches videotape replays of our game. So we know we have at least one out there. Well, one viewer. Thanks, Carl Jr. <laughs> Along the offensive front, Rex Nottage, Wilson, Parrish back in there, Ayub and Danny Smith. Gross going to keep it cut back, breaks one tackle across the 30. Truett Moss, the sophomore middle linebacker, makes the stop after Gross turns nothing into something and a gain of four. More offensive starters in the backfield is Gross and Ross, Hopkins, Carl Miller, Terrence Sorrell, who caught his third touchdown pass of the season earlier, and Daryl Belser. All of the scoring coming in the second quarter after a scoreless first period utc jumped out in front right away eagles answer with a pair of touchdowns gross wide pitch to ross and he is stuck jackie washington has really been active today Kevin Burley, a linebacker, number 51, also out there. Burley, a transfer from Georgia Tech, a native of West of Rome, Georgia. He's seeing some action now. Raymond Gross has made two dangerous pitches on the day. Look at the job of Joe Ross, the concentration, especially seeing Jackie Washington in his face. That's a good job by Joe Ross. Raymond Gross should say, hey, guys, thanks a lot. I'm going to get you one in your chest here sooner or later. Luke Brunson, Blanton, back along the front. Moss and Weems in the middle. Third down. Jingo Weems drops Raymond Gross for a loss of five. Weems, a freshman from Northside High School in Atlanta. He had company out there, Tony Hill and Troy Beck. Along the backfield, Drain, Greenway, Willis, and again, Jackie Washington who runs a 4-5-40 and has really been active. Back deep for UTC to field the punt is Sammy Hadley, a sophomore from Lake Wales, Florida. Carvin's fourth punt of the day. Not a good one. Bounces at the 47. Takes a sideways bounce and a favorable bounce for Georgia Southern. It's across midfield. Into the face of a stiff breeze. Harvin gets it across midfield, and UCT will take over when we come back. Yeah. 
You can see the parkas unwrapped and covering some of the players on Tim Stower's sideline. Yep, it's getting cold. Hope you brought your mittens and gloves. The scarves, they'll be coming out as the shadows creep across Chamberlain Field. The lights are on. We're early in the second half. Fumble. James Roberts is on top of that fumble. You know, at halftime, we talked to, about the rankings and teams with playoff ramifications. Let's take a look at those rankings in a different way, Delano. And the USA Today power rankings based on schedule strength, Middle Tennessee is the highest ranked 1AA team. Now let's take a look at the Tennessee Chattanooga offense. Bonaparte, the only junior of the front five. Stan Nix is the senior with a split back. Roberts and Shamsuddin. Hadley, McClendon, and Head have had an active first half. Oh, most caught. Sammy Hadley right on the numbers, right between his hands. That's a bullet. Buried him in the chest. Nice throw by Stan Nix. Certainly unusual for Hadley. He is the leading receiver for the Tennessee Chattanooga Mox. And that ball hit him right in his chest. And that's just a nightmare for Stan Nix, who put it right where most receivers would want it on the down and in pattern. Right in their hands. They don't have to leave the ground facing those safeties coming over. And you won't see Sammy Hadley do that very often. Key third down early here in the second half. Nix batted in the air. Mark Giles, the safety, came up and batted that ball. That'll bring up Pumpy Tudors for the fifth time today, and that brings up fourth down. How about this for a shocker, Delano? Southern Mississippi and Curly Hallman's club. Man, the Eagles knock off Auburn 13 to 12. That's a final. <laughs> Auburn falling to Southern Miss 13 to 12. Tudors, nice and high. Up comes Finley, fields it at the 19. A return of two yards. 12 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Georgia Southern has the ball. They're out in front of University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, 13 to seven. I wanna go back to those power rankings because this is based on the schedule strength and this will be a factor when the committee gets together to decide one week from tomorrow, the field of 16. Middle Tennessee is ranked ahead of Eastern Kentucky in the USA Today power rankings. Georgia Southern is the third highest 1AA team, followed by William & Mary fourth, Furman fifth. Gross, blue jerseys all around him, complete to Carl Miller. Chased down from behind by Cedric Greenway, the strong safety. That doesn't happen very often, brought down from behind. But after the gain of 16, first down for Georgia Southern. Last week we saw Daryl Belser make two crucial clips in the game against James Madison. Watch him here as he comes into the picture. He heads up right there. He lets up and doesn't get the clip, and that allows the play to stand. A good job by Carl Miller catching the ball and running afterwards. Joe Ross got it back. Right in the hands of Jackie Washington. Can you believe that? <laughs> Jackie Washington has that thing laying right out in front of his eyes, and he can't move his hands quick enough. Would have bit him if it was a snake. Can you believe that? Big break for Georgia Southern. Let's take a good look. Gross hands off to the fullback. Joe Ross right up the middle. The ball is just stripped. A good job by the Moccasins defenders. And boy, Georgia Southern living a charmed life right now. Washington had a hand on it. Right back to Joe Ross. Pounding ahead for the first down. Meeting head on. Middle linebacker Shingo Weems. Also there, Lee Femley for the stop. Carl Miller made that big play, that catch for the first down to keep this drive alive before this. We'll talk about Miller in a second. Joe Ross cutting back after moving outside, moving upfield for the first down. Carl Miller with his catch today. First one needs eight more to tie Tony Belser's single season record of 35 back in 1987. Tony now playing for the Canadian Football League up in Saskatchewan. Brother Darrell, number 80, a starting split in in the slot too much time the huddle clock expires on Raymond Gross and you know Phil Carl Miller you talked about him coming close to the reception record for Tony Belser every time uh, Carl Miller makes a catch he's uh, not going to be off of the delay a game on the offense he's knocking me out of the record books as a matter of fact <laughs> it pains me but it makes me 
happy to see that he makes the catches. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just about history in the record books at Georgia Southern. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Plenty of time. Gross. Looking for Carl Miller, who is manhandled at the 37 by Cedric Greenway. Nothing but blue shirts as that one is overthrown. Good job by the Georgia Southern offensive line of providing Raymond Gross with time. Rusty Parrish doing a good job on Billy Glanton that time. Raymond Gross just a little high with his throw. Perhaps that was the best thing because Paul Miller very well covered. Ball is loose again. Alonzo McGee shags it down. Fourth time this afternoon that Raymond Gross in the flex bone offense has put a ball on the ground. Fortunately, the Eagles, fortunately for the Eagles, they've covered three of those four. We've talked about Raymond Gross getting away with some bad pitches earlier. That time, McGee can not come up with the pitch. And I tell you what, is there a record for something like fumbling the ball and recovering it yourself? <laughs> Tony Hill, the big left end, right in Gross's face. They're reading Tony Hill, not blocking him, but reading him. Flag is down. Carl Miller in the middle, intercepted. Up to the 40, across the 35. Joe Ross brings round to it, Moss. Penalty flag is down. Let's see against who. It will be against Georgia Southern. Procedure. It is. Truett Moss with the interception. We have illegal procedure on the offense. Decline. First down. Second interception of the season for Truett Moss, a sophomore from Calhoun, Georgia. Let's take a timeout. Nine minutes remaining in the third period. Excellent field position for Stan Nix and the Moccasins. Dan Nix and the Moccasins have outstanding field position at the 33-yard line, taking over after the turnover. Truett Moss picking off that pass from Raymond Gross. First and 10 at the 33. Roberts hit immediately and dropped by Alex Mash, the freshman from Thomasville. This final score in this afternoon, Eastern Kentucky erases Marshall from the playoff picture, 15 to 12. Jim Donnan's club, Jim in his first year up in Huntington, but I tell you what, the herd will be back. That was a young club, Donahue Stevenson, one of the better players we have seen so far this year. But Marshall's young, young team, and they'll be back next year. Exactly. Notre Dame and Tennessee up in Knoxville, not far from here, tied at 20 in the second half. Kevin Whitley holds up Habersham. And that's going to be called that's going to be called interference. That wasn't holding or interference. That was a dance. <laughs> Kevin Whitley flat out beaten by Habersham over there. And Whitley did the smart thing. If you're beaten and you know you can't afford another touchdown, the best thing to do is hold and make sure they don't get an easy one. We have holding on the Well, get your dance card ready, because your number's up, Delano. Take a look. You see Kevin Whitley holding Habersham along the sideline. But as I mentioned, that's a good play, because if he gets away, that's more than likely a touchdown if the ball is thrown where it should be thrown. 9-14 remaining. Tim Stowers' team on top, needing a defensive stop here. In the third period, Georgia Southern 13, UTC 7. Shamsuddin. Not much room, but moving ahead. Roberts had a block in the backfield on Shane Maxwell, but Shamsuddin moves forward and is knocked down by Jim Unimer in a host of white shirts. Georgia Southern basketball team, Frank Kearns, gearing it up. Have a pair of games coming up the next week, both of them exhibitions. That'll be the St. Peter St. Petersburg Green Wave, an AAU squad and a touring team from Australia, the Newcastle Falcons. 
You can call 1-800-544-2798 for tickets. Operators are standing by now. Roberts up there to the 10-yard line. First down for UTC, Michael Berry holding on, and that was a big hole. A gain of eight yards and a UTC first down. Well, that was a veer back play, and you see the hole opening. Roberts, very quick to take. We said he does have some speed, and you could see it on that play. After he got the ball, he shot up through the hole for the big game. Left guard Ken Crisp from Chattanooga here from Macaulay High School doing the damage along with center Brian Hill and right guard Mike Duggar. Steve Busoletti puts his shoulder into James Roberts after maybe a gain of one. Second down and eight. Second down and goal. This reminds me of the first series of downs for UT Chattanooga where they took the ball and marched it right down the field, but they got in this same, very same position and stalled and could not make it on fourth down. Moccasins were stopped on fourth and goal at the two on their first possession of the game. Nix to McClendon, the tight end. Kevin Whitley. Wraps up McClendon, shy of the goal line. That'll be third down at the two-yard line. At the two-yard line, sure tackle by Kevin Whitley, the corner. Whitley really having an All-American day. This time, he fights off his receiver and realizes, recognizes that the pass is going to the back, and he comes up and makes the tackle. Even when he's not making a good play, he's making a good play, as we talked about earlier, holding the man to make sure he doesn't have the touchdown. Kevin Whitley doing a tremendous job today. Third down at the two. Shamsuddin. Touchdown, UTC. Or no, wait a minute. Let's check that spot. We have not seen a touchdown indication yet. Just inches. Boy, I thought he was in there. Mohamed Shamsuddin had blocking. Darius Dawson, the freshman from Moultrie, is out there on the corner. Let's see if he makes it in the end zone. Patrick Parr giving chase. No. He did not make it in the end zone. Good no, call by the officials. Right, his knee was down. In fact, the ball spotted right on the goal line. That's Frank Sadler, the offensive coordinator, his first year here. First year in his second stint at UTC. Sadler was here back in the Joe Morrison glory days, and then he... Followed Morrison onto New Mexico and then onto South Carolina. Perhaps more importantly on that play, Kevin Whitley on the opposite side from which they ran the ball was jumping up wildly because he was the only defensive back out on two receivers. So if Stan Nix would have looked over and recognized it, it would have been an easy touchdown. That's Coach Mack. Coach Mack dealing with the, the co and Tommy Spangler, the co-coordinators for Georgia Southern on the opposite sideline. That was Steve Nix, the older brother of Stan, both of them the sons of head coach Buddy Nix. Right on the inch line, fourth down. Six minutes remaining, 6.53 in the third period. James Roberts and Shamsuddin are the running backs. Gene Hayes, Nick Davis are there, the linebackers pursuing, fighting through their blocks. Big defensive stop, let's take this network timeout for Chattanooga. Tennessee Chattanooga has the named players along the defensive front, but so far Georgia Southern's defensive line and linebackers have been the decisive factor in this football game. Tremendous job of lateral pursuit by Georgia Southern. The key play, Shane Maxwell, as he comes over, jumps over a player to make the stop. Shane Maxwell, the key to that play. Maxwell, six foot five inches, a junior out of Winder, Georgia. Also got some attention as a basketball recruit out of high school. 
Here's second down and seven. Raymond Gross. Met right at the five and driven down by Shingo Weems, a freshman middle linebacker. Truett Moss, his partner in crime there in the middle of that defense, also in on the tackle. And this, Phil, a big play for Georgia Southern and for University of Tennessee Chattanooga. They realize Terry Harvin has not had a good job punting the ball today. Scores 13 to 7, very even so far. And the statistics, very even so far. Ross finds nothing. Billy Glanton with a pumped up defense for the Moccasins. Well, the Georgia Southern offense, three downs and out of there. Terry Harvin with his. As he marches out, the Georgia Southern punter addresses that back line. It's about a foot behind him. Back deep for the Moccasins. Sammy Hadley, the sophomore, good speed from Lake Wales, Florida. No pressure. A line drive off the side of his foot, bounces forward. Takes an eagle hop forward, but still out of bounds at the 35-yard line. The Georgia Southern defense will be called on once more to defend its side of the field from poor field position. Only a 30-yard boot for Terry Harvin. Frustrating day for him, but again, we need to recognize that breeze blowing from the left side of our picture to the right. Also, we need to recognize field condition. Terry Harvin may be a little tentative about getting everything into it because he's worried about coming down and slipping. Muhammad Shamsuddin and James Roberts are the splitbacks in the veer for Knicks. Has time. Complete. Sammy Hadley, no nope, incomplete. Stan Nix looks for Hadley on the quick look, but Kevin Whitley is right there. Right there, so he has to pull that pump fake in and look back to Hadley once again. Well, Georgia Southern rode up in cover two, and in that instant, the receiver needs to find the sinkhole, is what they call it, and Hadley did a good job that time. Nick just couldn't get him the ball. Sean Habersham into the lineup. At the bottom of the screen, Tony Head at the top. This is Shamsuddin. Up to the 30. Knocked out of bounds, shy of the first down. Michael West, the middle linebacker. Five foot nine inch, five foot ten inch, stumpy bullet flying through the air. Makes the tackle, not before a gain of eight, possibly nine, by Shamsuddin. Tennessee Chattanooga really carrying out their fakes well. That time, both the ends, defensive end and defensive tackle, on Georgia Southern's right side, both broke to the left before they realized the play was coming back to the right. Third and one. Shamsuddin has the first down. Running with power. Out of bounds on his feet. Rodney Oglesby de delivers a big smack, but Oglesby goes down, and Shamsuddin keeps his feet, and the moccasins stay on the drive, keeping this possession alive. Just another example of how evenly this game has been played. Four and a half minutes remaining in the third. Roberts stacked up. Tim Brown up at the top. And Steve Busoletti, check that, Give Smith at the bottom. Not far from here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Johnny Majors volunteers have jumped out in front of Lou Holtz in the top-ranked Irish, 23-20. Again, second half up in Knoxville. Nine minutes remaining in the game at Knoxville. We have less than four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Knicks getting pressure, looking for Ransby. Coming back, out of bounds incomplete. And Knicks really getting some heat from Michael Berry, Steve Busoletti, and Nick Davis. Smart move just to throw that out of bounds. Kevin Whitley had Ransby well played on the near sideline. That brings up third down and 10 at the 21. Pretty impressive by Kevin Whitley. He was out there on Ransby by himself because Georgia Southern was coming on the blitz, so Whitley was playing man to man. UTC 7 of 12. 
On third downs, that's outstanding. Screen set up, Sean Sedin. Giles is there. A flag, that'll be holding. Giles drops Shamsuddin for a loss of two. Outstanding play by Mark Giles, a junior from Northside High School in Warner Robins. Well, Phil, we've seen that screenplay work twice for University of Tennessee Chattanooga so far in this ballgame. That time, Mark Giles read it perfectly. He says, hey, fool me once. You're not going to fool me twice. And he makes the good play and the good tackle. You can see Ken Crisp, the senior left guard. On the offense, declined. Fourth down. We can see Ken Crisp scrape a hand along the back of Mark Giles' jersey trying to grab one. In fact, I don't think he did a very good job of trying to hold him. <laughs> That'll bring up fourth down. Rodney Allen comes on. He's 12 of 17. His first field goal attempt this afternoon, along of 44 this year. And this one is spotted at the 35-yard line. That'll make it a... At the 30-yard line. That'll make it a 40-yard boot up and... Yes! Moccasins move to within a field goal, the Georgia Southern Eagles. Field position pays off with a boot by Rodney Allen. Under three and a half minutes remaining in Chattanooga in the third quarter. Tim Stowers' defense makes a stand. But still, UTC puts a field goal up on the board. First points of the second half this afternoon. And the Moccasins are now within a field goal. The Stowers nervously paces the far sideline. Tim, just 32 years old, but he has aged considerably since the <laughs> beginning of this season. Godoy's boot. Miller. Hudson going back, retreats to his 10. 20. Punches forward up to the 30-yard line. Knocked down by Cedric Greenway. A strong safety in there working with special teams. Fair field position. A return of 20 by Don Hudson, a backup defensive back. Well, Hudson got away with something you never want to do. He backed up into the deep man. The up back does not want to do that. But Carl Miller, he realized what had happened, and he turns it up and blocks. He is a tremendous player, and a good job by Hedman. Pretty good, how are you? Gross to Carl Miller. Oh, big hit. My Jackie Washington sheds Alonzo McGee as blocker and really punishes Carl Miller. But Miller moves forward. Let's check the spot for a gain of four. On the last scoring drive, seven plays to cover 12 yards. The Eagles really digging in on defense. Rodney Allen credited with a 41-yard field goal. And the Moccasins trailing with that much time in the third, 13-10. Nothing there, absolutely nothing. Shingo Wings and Washington once more. Tennessee Chattanooga really control the offensive line as you see Weems come in there, pitch it out, and the cornerback, Jackie Washington, contain leverage there, and that's the way you play the option. We expected a defensive battle today, and with two minutes remaining in the third, the Eagles and Moccasins have delivered. Gross, quick look to Carl Miller. Up to the 40. Near a first down, but he's shy. Let's check the spot. Miller's second catch of the day. Derek Willis and Branch Drain, defensive backs, converging on the stop. First time we've seen this all day. They split Carl Miller out and throw it right to him on the little hitch pattern and say, Carl Miller, use your gifted talents to get us a first down. But I think you're right, Phil. I think they came up just a little bit short. Shingo Weems, the freshman linebacker from Northside High School in Atlanta, also in on the tackle. That's Moss signaling that much. Tim Stowers, nope. Let's bring on the kicker, on the punter, rather. Less than two minutes remaining in the third period. The Georgia Southern offense has not been able to establish anything here in the third period. And I think that's why it's so important for Georgia Southern to kick the ball right now, kick it away, and say, hey, let our defense maybe create something, a turnover. Seventh boot of the afternoon upcoming for Terry Harvin. Back deep with speedy Sammy Hadley, a sophomore for UTC. 
Nightfall nearing here in Chamberlain Field. Line drive spiral. Hadley going to field it at the 26. And that'll bring on the moccasin offense. Again, Terry Harvin somewhat frustrated with his attempt. And again, he's booting into the teeth of a stiff win. A well, good thing that one of the strengths of the Georgia Southern defense is depth because we're getting a workout. They are getting a, de a workout on the depth this afternoon. Next week, both teams finish up their regular season. Georgia Southern at home, 1 o'clock kickoff at Allen Paulson Stadium. The Moccasins travel up to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Take on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Nick's on first down. Fakes to Roberts. Passes to Sean Sedin across the 30. 35. Has speed. First down. Mad hard by Jim Mutimer at the 40. Mutimer bounces up quickly, but he comes off the field. And will have a seat. Sean Sedin accelerates quickly, Delano. Paul Sickley came up and read the play perfectly, but he just couldn't come up with a tackle. And boy, when Shumsdine gets out in that open field, he can flat out go. Clint Averett substituting for Mutimer. Shumsdine on the pitch. Averett misses the hand. He has the sideline. He has speed. 35. Up to the 32-yard line. Darius Dawson, the freshman linebacker for Georgia Southern, saves a touchdown. And the moccasins in Georgia Southern territory and on the drive. And Stan Nix a la Raymond Gross running the option to perfection, but give some credit to the senior dominated offensive line of the University of Tata Tennessee Chattanooga. Mike Duggar and Tommy Bonaparte, that 330 pound junior on the right side. Nix looking. Is it complete? If it is, it's a first down. Tony Head, the man for whom that was attended. Yes, a completion. Gain of 15. Ball spotted at the 17. And Stan Nix, a perfect job of waiting until Head got in the open because at one point he was not in the open. A linebacker was in his, in his face, and he finally got broke into the open, and uh, Nix hit him perfectly. Head played high school ball at Northside High at Warner Robins, along with Mark Giles of Georgia Southern. Nix has company. Curtis Gordon rides Nix after he rides James Roberts, the first man through. Michael West also there, the middle linebacker from Roswell, Georgia. Curtis Gordon and Michael Berry going through that ritual that they always go through, the slapping of the faces. Gordon comes in untouched from the backside. Nix never had a chance. Gordon, part of the depth of that front for the defense of Georgia Southern. Giff Smith also credited with the tackle. Nick's going to let that clock tick away. We come to the end of three quarters. And a hard hitting, well played ball game. Back with the final quarter, Georgia Southern leading UTC by a field goal after three. Some accommodations provided by the King's Lodge Motel, 2400 West Side Drive in Chattanooga. In state for reservations, call 800 572 7656. Out of state, 800 251 7702. The sun setting on Chattanooga, Tennessee. The UTC Moccasins on the move, second down and 14 at the 21. James Roberts. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, but does get, but gets no more. Michael West and Jim Mutimer, the safety. Mutimer back in the lineup for Georgia Southern. Roberts from Valdosta High School. The Wildcats ranked 16th in the nation in the USA Today Super, Super 25. Right here in Chattanooga, Red Bank High School, unbeaten. They were rained out last night. They'll play tonight. A steady day of rain yesterday here in Chattanooga. Drizzle this morning, and that leads to a slippery, muddy field. That's why we see the dirty jerseys here early in the fourth quarter. Sham Sabine will throw Nix on the free flicker wide open. Here's Oldersby, and a hit by Michael Berry. 
First down on the flea flicker, Mohamed Shamsuddin, man that was set up beautifully by the moccasins. Credit Frank Sadler, the offensive coordinator of UTC. You can see him on the right side of the screen calling the plays. Set up beautifully. Set up beautifully because Georgia Southern was in the emotion of the game, and they pursue even more when that occurs. Back to Stan Nix, but Rodney Oglesby, who was injured early in the game, does a good job of keeping Nix out of the end zone. For the second consecutive drive, UTC inside the 10 on Georgia Southern. Shamsuddin perhaps gets back to the line of scrimmage. Curtis Gordon, Mark Giles in there. Let's see who else gets up from the stack. Michael West and Steve Busiletti along with Michael Berry. Good, quick pursuit by Georgia Southern. Those two running backs, Shamsuddin, who is from Atlanta, Roberts, who is from Valdosta, two of 46 members of this roster from the state of Georgia. How about that? Extra incentive playing the defending national champ, Georgia Southern Eagles, this afternoon. 46 of 108 members of the roster are from the Peach State. Second down, Shamsuddin has speed. Leaping touchdown and a flag down. Touchdown, UTC, but let's check out that flag. It looks like holding out on the corner. That looks like a clip. The preliminary indication from our referee, Dan Woolridge, is clipping against UTC. Oh boy, and that really has to hurt Shamsuddin. Last time he thought it was in, this time he thought it was in, and a clipping call. Hurts also because of the loss of down. Here's Dan Woolridge. We have clipping on the offense. We're it down. Second down. Up in Knoxville. Notre Dame answers a volunteer field goal with a touchdown to take the lead, 27-23, late in the fourth quarter. Let's look for that clip on the right side of the screen. Well, there you see Shamsuddin cutting up. I certainly don't see it yet. A good block there. Jimmy Mutter, we couldn't see it. Second down, Knicks. Ball batted, and oh, and was picked off by Rodney Oglesby, and he goes down. Nick Davis also down. They collided. Linebacker and defensive back. That'll bring up third down and 16. This crowd here at Chamberlain Field on its feet standing. Let's take a look at it one more time. Let's go back. Nick's getting pressure. Tipped by Tony Head. Davis comes in late on the play and in a domino effect really rips into Head and then head into Rodney Oglesby. And that's Nick Davis, the freshman from Griffin, Georgia. And it's good to see that he hops up, up and he will hustle off the field. Well, let's look ahead to the Division I AA championship game. It'll be once again in Statesboro at Allen Paulson Stadium. You can order your tickets by calling 1-800-544-2798. Operators are on duty now. Again, 1-800-544-2798. UTC has cooled off a hot club, Georgia Southern. And now the Moccasins face third and 16. Knicks to McClendon, incomplete. Derek McClendon, the senior tight end, has been a problem for the Eagle defense across the middle. He was open in the throw just a little bit behind him. Chattanooga has been effective with that play all day, and as you said, Nix just doesn't lead him like he should have, or it could have been six points for Tennessee Chattanooga. Nix spots the ball at the 23. Rodney Allen with a 33-yard attempt. Up and sideways and in on the near upright. Just through, and we have a tie ball game. Moccasin fans up on their feet and rewarding the blue shirts who hustle off the field. Let's take this local timeout. That much time left in the fourth period. We've got a good one.
Tennessee Chattanooga offense dominating the second half of the ball game with an assist to its defense. Moccasins have the only points of the second half. Rodney Allen right there with a pair of boots. Rob Godoy set to kick it off with 12.40 remaining in the game. It's all tied up, 13 all. Godoy's boots. Eludes Herman Gray along the near sideline. There's a flag, they'll take it back. Kyle Miller had a long way to get to that thing. Gray on the near sideline from Fairfax, South Carolina. The backup A back. He has a clean jersey, <laughs> clean uniform. What does a, that mean? <laughs> yeah, a rarity here on this muddy, slippery field. Playing in a late afternoon game after plenty of rain yesterday and drizzle this morning in Chattanooga. On the last drive, 11 plays, four minutes, covering 57 yards. Sham Sedin scores the touchdown. It's called back because of the clipping. Allen caps it off with a 33-yard field goal. And I think Godoy was trying to keep the ball away from Carl Miller, and so many times when that happens, the ball usually goes out of bounds and you have to kick it again. Think about the two Allen field goals. Also consider the goal line stand. Godoy slips down. It's Herman Gray fielding it over his shoulder. Now Miller has it loose. Sean Austin, that ball was live, smothers it at the 30, at, check that, at the 25-yard line. Sean Austin, the freshman from Thomasville, smothers a mistake. Well, the Georgia Southern offense needs to get something established here to take a little bit of pressure off its defense. And this series of downs, Phil, will ultimately be won in the trenches. Let's see what Tennessee Chattanooga's defensive line does to Georgia Southern's offensive line or vice versa. Terrence Sorrell and Daryl Belser split to the top of the screen. Gross on the muddy track. Pitching to Joe Ross. And he's brought down by Truett Moss, the sophomore linebacker. Moss from Calhoun, Georgia. He's a sophomore. Eight starters on the defense for UTC. Seven on the offense hail from the state of Georgia. A loss of one, second down 11. Joe Ross right up the gut, has room. Slipping and sliding. A gain of maybe eight, yep. That'll bring, down, bring up third down and two. Rusty Parrish, Miguel Ayub, John Wilson, the middle of that line, moving them out. Joe Ross, a good job of cutting back, but in the process of cutting back, he caught a foot, and that is what tripped him up. Eagles at the most slippery part of the field. Gross, up, shy of the first down. Whoop, let's check the spot. A favorable spot. Raymond's knees down shy of the 35, but he lunges and leans the ball across the first down marker. Yep. First and 10 for the Eagles. That's a big one. Just inches. We saw Raymond Gross do that last week against James Madison to pick up the touchdown. He's becoming real good at that. Look at him. Stretch that ball out. Yes. He says, I've got that first down. Eagles have been averaging 30 points a game over that five-game winning streak, but only have 13 on the board here early in the fourth. Carl Miller off the pitch. Brought down at the 40, gain of five. Albert Luke, a defensive end, runs it down from the backside. Alonzo McGee, a good job of blocking for his counterpart in the backfield out there on Jackie Washington. That opens it up a little bit for Carl Miller to pick up the yardage in that time. Georgia Southern's offensive line won the battle. Also in the last five games, the Eagle defense has averaged giving up only 13 points a game. That's how much the Moccasins have on the board right now. Gross has time, has a receiver. Belser at the 40, spinning. Up to the 36-yard line, big play. Gain of about 25. Belser brought down by linebacker Truett Moss. Nice pass, nice catch. Daryl Belser was supposed to go long on this play. He realized that Raymond Gross had nowhere to throw it, so he came back to the ball, and that's a tremendous job by the wide receiver. Clock becoming a factor on the move under 10 and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. 
Gross pitches to Carl Miller. Nothing doing. Washington right there. Shingo Weems, the linebacker. Look how quickly he gets out to cover the pitch. That's right. Washington and Weems now realizing that Georgia Southern is more than likely going to run the option. So at the first sight of it, they are blazing up to the line of scrimmage. That's why Georgia Southern tried to drop back on the earlier play to throw the play action pass. Here we are early in the final period. A year ago down in Statesboro, it was tight early fourth quarter. Eagles up 17-13 and a, an interception and a fumble by UTC blow that thing open. This has been a tightly played game. Gross has Belser again at the 25. Cuts up field. A 20-yard connection. First and 10, Doug Couch makes the stop for UTC and the Eagles with their most impressive offensive possession of the second half. Chattanooga scored on the middle route earlier in the game. This time, Georgia Southern almost scores. When Daryl Belser looks at the film come on, coming up on Sunday, he'll probably say, why didn't I just keep running to the sideline? It was wide open that way. Raymond Gross hitting on 55% of his passes throughout the season. And we'll come back to pick up the <laughs> thrilling, the nerve-wracking conclusion of this game after this. Georgia Southern University, our tradition of excellence, our quality of life, our spirit and pride, have made us one of the fastest growing campuses in the nation. The momentum of the campus continues to grow along with Southern's reputation for academic excellence. The quality of life enjoyed at this mid-sized university compares with the best in the South. So for a great education in an ideal setting, we're Georgia Southern University. Tim Stowers' club grabbed the lead with eight minutes remaining in the second quarter, way back in the first half. Now it's all tied up, and they're on the move, trying to snatch that lead right back. Raymond Gross brought down by Albert Luke for a loss of two. Clock on the move at nine and a half minutes remaining. Right now, the Chattanooga linebacker's doing a good job of reading option and coming up. The more and more you play against the option and get along into the game, you realize what's coming at you, and you start coming up making good play. Second down and 12. Chattanooga winning this battle on the ground. Inside handoff, Miller has a block. 15, 10, 5. First down, and there's a flag. Number 24, By the back judge, inside the five-yard line, Carl Miller slicing through the moccasin defense. Let's check the call. Moccasins like it, yep, against Georgia Southern. See if we can pick it up. Nice yep. call by Jay Russell, who handles the play calls for Georgia Southern. The old Utah pass, and... Oftentimes, when you've been running the option and running the option, you can run that because it looks as if you're going back on the pass, and it's basically a run. I think I caught Tony Belser just out of the screen on that replay. Let's take another look from a different angle. The old Utah pass. There you see Carl kicking up some mud. Doing a little jitterbug. Lonzo move. McGee clipping Shingo Weems from the backside. Not Tony Belser, my mistake. There you saw it, Phil. Good call. Second down and 15. What's Buddy Nix out there talking about right now? Perhaps dinner? Perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Wool Woolridge is our referee. Something in the end zone or outside the end zone. <laughs> we can pick up that along the sideline <laughs> before we catch something that perhaps we should not. Remember, Mohamed Shamsuddin on the last possession went in for the touchdown, clipping calls it back. 
Carl Miller down inside the five-yard line for Georgia Southern. Clipping calls it back. The Eagles call a timeout with nine minutes remaining in the ball game. Moccasin defense will come to the near side. Yeah, let's take a timeout and try to sort this out. Nine minutes remaining in the ball game. We're all tied up at 13 in Chattanooga. Well, the price was not right. <laughs> At least not right in the eyes of Buddy Nix. Bill Price, the sideline reporter for the Georgia Southern Radio Network, has been chased from the end zone over to the Eagles sideline. Second down and 14. Second effort by Joe Ross gets him back maybe to the original first down marker. Gain of four, maybe five. Third down and 10. Up to the 20. Take a look Again at it. Again in that slippery part of the field. Exactly. Taking a look at it from ground level. Joe Ross, a good job of cutting back. I see nothing wrong with his knee right now. And this play is very important, Phil, because Georgia Southern will want to get the ball at least on the hash marks in case of a field goal. Third down and 10. Fumble. Chattanooga recovers. What a pop. Joe Ross really stuck at the line of scrimmage. Ken Jones recovers the fumble for UTC. Big turn of events here with 8.22 remaining in the ball game. Jones, a sophomore from Columbia, Tennessee. Reserve safety. Second fumble recovery of the day, fifth fumble of the afternoon, second one lost, and the third turnover, and yep, that might be the story of this game. Next to Muhammad Shamsuddin, Giff Smith is right there at the top of the pile. Curtis Gordon at the bottom. Well, Phil, a lot of bullets have been shot here today, and a lot of dodging has been done because Chattanooga has had their chances and they have blown them, and Georgia Southern has had their chances and they have blown them as well. Let's see who can make the big play at the right time. Seven fifty remaining in this tie game. Knicks looking. Under throws, oh, dangerous pass. Tony had the man for whom that pass was intended. 7.40 remaining in the game. Dangerous pass that far behind his intended receiver. Good job of coverage by the Georgia Southern defensive backfield. Anytime you see a quarterback with that much time to throw and really nobody to throw it to, those guys are doing their job downfield. Tony Head splits to the top of the screen. Sammy Hadley, a sophomore, at the bottom. Third down and 11. Look for McClendon over the middle. Someone got a hand on that ball. Let's see who. McClendon was the intended receiver, but the ball not even close. Stan Nix knocked on his seat. Georgia Southern defense, three downs and off the field. Pumpy Tudors from his own end zone. 7.33 remaining in this tie game. Eagles setting up the return. Almost got to that. Pumpy Tudors into a win. Finley's going to let it hop at midfield. And the ball is down. Georgia Southern takes over with seven minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the game. Eagles have been shut out here in the second half by an active Tennessee Chattanooga defense. Billy Glanton gets credit along the front, the nose guard, as does Troy Beck and Tony Hill. Let's not forget those middle linebackers, Truett Moss and Shingo Weems. Georgia Southern taking over at midfield and really one of the better spots. Not as messy, not as muddy on this field. Joe Ross is the fullback, his uniform all muddy. 7.21 remaining in the game. Gross looking for Sorrell. Has McGee. Incomplete. Branch Drain 
zeroes in on McGee to make the hit. If he keeps his head up and looks for the interception, the ball is right there, tipped by McGee. Georgia Southern stretching the defense this time, sending all the receivers down the hash marks, and McGee actually broke open. That time, Raymond grows just a little bit long. Nice thought by the Eagles. McGee had middle linebacker Truett Moss beat. Gross to Carl Miller. Shingo Reeves gets a hand on along the sideline. Miller tiptoeing and dancing. Reeves in the backfield. Let's see where they spot this along the Georgia Southern sideline, right in front of the Eagle bench. <laughs> they spot it at the 47-yard line. Gain of three. And you see him trying to tight rope along the sideline, and that's where his that's where his foot goes out of bounds. It looked like it was a little farther up, and the Georgia Southern Eagle fans not happy, the bench not happy, neither Carl Miller. From the replay and from our vantage point, sure looked like Carl Miller stepped out of bounds and it was an accurate spot. Third down and six. Gross. Has Sorrell. First down, Georgia Southern. Whoops, wait a minute, let's check the spot. Right in front of the moccasin bench, Brant's drain comes up to knock him out of bounds. Raymond Gross rolling out, just a quick out pattern. Terrence Sorrell should know to get to that first down marker. I think that he thought he might have it, and indeed, they do. Bunch of little officials running out there, uh, quite a few now. It has grown. The Tennessee Chattanooga players are officials, and Georgia Southern are officials. <laughs> 6.45 remaining in the game. Glanton all over, or check that. Albert Lake makes the stop, but Joe Brunson right in the face of Joe Ross. Raymond Gross eliminating one of his options. Big stick. Second down and 10. And we talked about the nose guard completely shutting down the option. That's how you do it. If you take that center and cut down that fullback right off the bat, then Raymond Gross really has only two options, and it cuts down his field of vision. The lights are on at Chamberlain Field. Nightfall upon us in Chattanooga. Tied up at 13, last six minutes of the game. Carl Miller has blockers. Trying to get out of bounds at the 30. First down, out of bounds. Nope, he's still alive. Up to the 25-yard line. That's the inside shovel pass. It worked for Miller, the last possession, to get down inside the five. And so Jay Russell, the, assist, the assistant coach, comes right back with the call. I wonder how many times Carl Miller said, get out of the way, guys. Look, Joe Ross in his way, another player in his way. But he does finally break it out and get to the sideline. And then he has the presence of mind when he gets over there to stop and cut it back and pick up two or three more yards. So Carl Miller, a tremendous run on the play. The Utah pass working again for Georgia Southern. Tyrone Harris first, and then Cedric Greenway later in the play, just within arm's reach, but could not bring down Carl Miller. Fullback slams right ahead. Joe Brunson makes the stop. Maybe a gain of one. With the spot, no gain. And I tell you what's on Georgia Southern's mind. Hold on to the ball, and the coaches for Tennessee Chattanooga are telling them, when you make the tackle, tackle, how about an extra strip? to try to get it because they know a field goal could hurt them. Tim Stowers really coming of age here in his first season on pressure games like this. Five and a half minutes left on second and 10. Gross pounded forward by Tony Hill. Across the 20. Third down and four. Stowers, 32 years old. He and his wife just recently had their second child, a daughter, to go along with son TJ. Phil, take a look at some of the hits being dished out. Tony Hill, we talked about him being a pro prospect. We look behind us and all the pro scouts are gone. No telling where they are, but I'm sure they're not going to miss this exciting finish. 4.55 left in the game. Tony Hill gets Ross behind the line of scrimmage. He makes initial contact, and Truett Moss cleans up the tackle. Fourth down. That'll bring on Mike Dallas. Dallas eight for 10 so far this year, and this will bring it up. It seemed right here that Raymond Ghost should have turned the ball up, 
and take it off, but he decided to string it out. I'm not exactly sure what he was doing on the play. Georgia Southern calls timeout. They're a man shy along the front of the offense. Eagles line up for the field goal attempt. Call timeout, so we'll take a break also. Four and a half minutes remaining. A tie game from Chattanooga. Originally attended Georgia Tech before transferring to Georgia Southern. He's faced pressure boots before. Now he has a 39-yard attempt with four and a half minutes remaining in this tie game. Snap is good. Dallas up and yes. Gets through on the near upright. Terry Harvin and Dallas emphatic out on the field and with four minutes and 20 seconds remaining georgia southern 16 utc 13 but this is not over moccasins have really moved that ball on the on offense today and dowis separated himself from the georgia southern huddle before we came back out of that timeout he handled it alone thought about it thought about it and then he did it made the kick Score is 16-13. Let's correct that. 16-13. Dallas. Hal Radford snap. Terry Harbin spot. Up and gets in. Just gets in on that near side upright. Georgia Southern out in front. 16-13. We've had a good game here, Delano. Well, uh, it's University of Tennessee Chattanooga against Georgia Southern. What else is new, Phil? <laughs> final score from Knoxville. Notre Dame beats Tennessee. We'll have that final score in a minute. Back deep for Georgia Southern. Jerry Ellison, a speedy backup running back from Augusta. Back there with Sean Habersham from Louisville, Georgia. Louisville spelled like Louisville, but Southern fans know that it's pronounced Louisville because Ernest Thompson, a prominent running back, hailed from Louisville, Georgia. Ernest now with the Kansas City Chiefs. 34-29, the final score at a packed stadium up in Knoxville. Notre Dame beats Tennessee. Irish State number one and in control of the bowl picture. This is Ellison. Met hard across the 29, uh, across the 20-yard line. And with four minutes and 12 seconds remaining, the Moccasins will take over. Clint Averett credited with the tackle on special teams. On that last scoring drive, nine plays. Covering 29 yards in three minutes. Mike Dallas from 39 yards out. Nice form. He had missed one earlier in the game. Comes through with four and a half minutes remaining in the game. Nicks to the air. As Shamsadeen. Michael Berry on the coverage, barking at Shamsadeen, who lay on the ground. McClendon and his tight end and Sammy Hadley looked like they were open along the near sideline in front of the moccasin bench. Raymond Gross has given his team an opportunity to win, not by running, but by passing the ball, outdueling Stan Nick so far. Raymond Gross just finds a way to win. And that's how the Eagles have had to move the ball, and now that's how UTC will have to come from behind again. Knicks has time. Complete to Hadley. First down at the 47, uh, check that, at the 37-yard line. Kevin Whitley makes the tackle. Hadley, a nice little curl pattern to the sideline. He goes up about 14 yards, comes back to the ball. Good job. Kevin Whitley just a little late on the coverage. 
Adley to the top of the screen. Acre to the bottom. Getting pressure. Nixon loops. Pressure momentarily. Throws it up. Acre. Oh, great catch. Yes. Bobby Acre from Washington Wilkes High School in Georgia hauls it down. An acrobatic catch. Gorgeous catch. Well, at first, that looked like that could either be an incomplete pass when it left, left Nixon's hands or an interception for Acre. Tremendous athletic ability of getting up, very acrobatic on that play, and came down with the tip ball and the catch. Rodney Oglesby, outstanding coverage, and the moccasins move just under 30 yards in, a two, in two plays. Back on the move at 3.18 remaining in the game. Draw to Shamsuddin, has room. And speed, quickly. Touchdown, UTC. Georgia Southern's defensive line coming full throttle, and so Frank Sadler mixes it up. The offensive coordinator, nice call by Sadler. Rodney Allen is on, and good. 20 to 16, Moccasins lead by four. That eliminates the field goal to tie it back up. Three minutes, five seconds remaining. Eagles trailing by 20 to 16. Right now, I'm thinking back to the game in Huntington, West Virginia against the Marshall Thundering Herd in which Georgia Southern trailed with a minute and a half remaining in that game, and Raymond Gross drove his team. The only problem with that, this is a muddy track right now. Shamsuddin was able to get outside, away from inside the hash marks, where he had good footing, and he was able to apply that brilliant speed. Mohammed Shamsuddin from McNair High School in Atlanta. Bolting 47 yards with three minutes remaining. And Tim Stowers pacing the far sideline. Remaining calm under fire. And knowing that his team is really in a game right now. And Phil, this is where champions are made. Three oh five remaining in this ball game. This has really been a good. I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now because there's so much good to talk about. Good offense and defense throughout the game, and now it's come down to the final three minutes. You can basically say two teams at the height. Don oh, Hudson. Retreats to the 15 to field the boys' kick. The 20 has room. 30 spinning. A return of 24 yards up to the 39-yard line. James Roberts makes the stop on special teams play. Man, there was a hole for Don Hudson right at the heart. Truett Moss urging on the hometown Tennessee Chattanooga Moccasin fans. And they're on their feet. 2.56 remaining in the game. Gross has Miller. Incomplete. Greenway delivers a blow. Cedric Greenway dishes out some punishment after the pass was overthrown. Second down. Raymond Gross had Miller coming across on the stretch pattern again. That time, it was a variation of the stretch. Carl Miller has a decision to make of whether to cut it in or keep straight up the field. That time, he broke it inside, and Raymond Gross a little long again. Last scoring drive. Shamsuddin bolting 47 yards, covering 76 yards in four plays. Plenty of time. Gross has Sorrell. Off the adrenaline of the moment. Another overthrown pass. Out there on coverage, Brant's drain for the Moccasins. 2.39 remaining in the contest, which brings up third down. Oh. 
Raymond Gross looking over to the sideline. Jay Russell is signaling in the play from here, atop the press box down to the field. And Raymond Gross makes the call ultimately. Perhaps because of the icy winter-like weather here tonight, the crowd is not standing room only, but those here are standing for this third down. Miller. Shy of the first down, knocked down by Shingo Weems, the middle linebacker. Kevin Burley also in there, as is Truett Moss. Three linebackers dropping over the middle. That'll bring up fourth down and a long three. Raymond Gross drops back and tries to catch the defense. Dropping back on the deep receivers. Carl Miller coming across underneath at about seven or eight yards. But Tennessee Chattanooga's defense up to the task. The linebackers come up quickly. Georgia Southern has called a timeout. Raymond Gross over on the far sideline here at Chamberlain Field. Talking to Tim Stowers and Mike Hodges, the offensive line coach. Jay Russell on headset with Hodges. Russell up in the press box. That's Vance Pike on the right side of the screen, one of your former teammates. Tim Stowers, sure you go for it with fourth down and five. And with 2.22 left in the ball game. A field goal. Does no good for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Look how fired up UTC is in front of its own bench. We'd like to say a word of thanks to the athletic departments of both Georgia Southern and Tennessee Chattanooga. To the coaching staffs and sports information staffs. Fourth down and five. Gross, complete first down. Kyle Miller out of bounds across midfield. Knocked out of bounds by Cedric Greenway. Raymond Gross, man, was he calm back there in the pocket, and he had time. Well, Phil, that's not only a big play because they picked up the first down, but they do so picking up the first down, and Carl Miller, the presence of mind to back up and fall out of bounds to stop the clock. Good point, Delano. Excellent point. 2-11 left in the game. Gross has Sorrell up to the 30-yard line. Again, first down, gain of 20. Third consecutive connection. Raymond Gross has a hot hand right now. Sorrell knocked down by Cedric Greenway. Clock dead at 2 one Sorrell running the curl route about 16 yards. Good enough for the first down. Good route by Sorrell. Raymond to Belser. A flag, no. Georgia Southern bench jumping up and down. Jackie Washington delivers the blow. Was it premature? Let's take another look here in a minute. Gross had connected on three straight passes. He's getting time, so let's give credit to that Georgia Southern offensive front. Danny Smith, a junior. Miguel Ayub, the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Rusty Parrish. John Wilson, a senior from Dublin. And Rex Nottage from Coral Springs, Florida. Second down and 10. 152 left in the game. Gross throws it out of bounds. Belser covered very well by Jackie Washington. Eagles trail 20 to 16. Good job of coverage by the Tennessee Chattanooga Moccasins. Backside, Terrence Sorrell trying to get open and look for that. Backside, Terrence Sorrell is one-on-one -on -one with his cornerback. Don't be surprised if Raymond Gross looks off to the left this time and throws back right. Seventh play of this drive. All six previous have been passes. Gross getting heat. Has Miller, tiptoes, out of bounds. Well done, Carl Miller, outstanding, out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Assisted, knocked out by Derek Willis. And I just caught it, Phil, I had to say it, but Raymond Gross fakes to the left and goes back right. He was looking for Terrence Sorrell first. Sorrell was covered, so he hit his safety valve. Carl Miller along the sideline. Good job of Carl Miller making the catch and getting out. From his own 38 with 2.50 remaining in the game. Gross has marched the Eagles inside the 20 with that much time left. Joe Ross, touchdown, Georgia Southern. It breaks open right away, and it breaks open big.
after seven consecutive pass plays, they fool him with the run. Joe Ross, a tremendous job of cutting back, and I've said it so many times before, the fullback can go the whole game in Georgia Southern's offense, not hurt you, and then at the most important part of the game, voila, there he is, cutting back, going into the end zone untouched. This is not over, 132 left. Dallas needs this extra point to give it a, a margin of three, a field goal. Mike Dallas splits the uprights with authority. Moccasins will get the ball back with 132 left. And again, this again, this game is not over. Georgia Southern moving 62 yards on eight plays. And they cover one minute and 20 seconds when Raymond Gross turns and hands it off to fellow senior Joe Ross from Augusta, Georgia. Georgia Southern have been dropping back in the past, play after play after play. This time they revert back to what got them to this point, the old option, and Joe Ross cuts it back against the grain and makes the touchdown. I'll say it again, what a game <laughs> this has developed into at Chamberlain Field. The Moccasins now facing a must-win situation when you think about the playoffs. Tim Stowers exuding confidence, checking the win, throws it up, not much, behind the back of Don Norton. First half of this game, there was a stiff breeze. But as you said, Phil, it is not over a long way from over. A minute 32 left on the clock. That seems like an eternity to Georgia Southern, I'm sure. We saw Stan Nix, the moccasin quarterback, standing on the near sideline, waiting for his turn to go man-to-man -man with Georgia Southern quarterback Raymond Gross, who marched his team down the field in less than a minute and a half. Eagles lead 23-20 with 132 left. Norton slips on the boot. That's Ellison. That is six. Trying to get outside. He has speed. Out of bounds across the 20. Helped out by Brad Allman, a junior from Sylvania, right next door to Statesboro. Brad Allman, a backup free safety, makes the hit. Good field position, a return of about 16 yards. UTC will take over at the 22-yard line. Let's recap that scoring drive. Eight of the nine plays are passes, but on the ninth, Joe Ross goes 18 yards with a nice hole by his offensive line. They cover 62 yards, 133. And now with 125 remaining in the game, Stan Nix, the senior, the son of the head coach at UTC, takes over. Getting time. Give Smith on the run. Nix eludes. Complete. First down. Tony had Bulldog out of bounds, but not before he picks up the first down. Mark Giles, physical play. Through down. Tony had the junior from Warner Robins. A pair of former high school teammates. Also, another good play. University of Tennessee Chattanooga completes the pass, and they go out of bounds. Stan Nix feeling the heat from Gil Smith, but he does a good job of running to the sideline and throwing back across his body. Head split to the top of the screen. William Ransby at the bottom. Nix getting pressure from Gordon. Well shy of the intended receiver, William Ransby. Nix feeling a lot of pressure now from Gordon and Gibbs Smith and Steve Busiletti, but that was a smart play by Nix that time. Know where they throw to, don't risk interception, throw it out of bounds. Ellison, the man who returned that last kick return, who returned the last kick on the sideline and needing attention. Let's keep an eye on that clock, all important. It's stopped now with 107 remaining. Nick's on third, on second down. Picked up, no! Right in and out of the hands of Rodney Yogelsby. Nix gets a break. That brings a third down. Sammy Hadley was covered in front and behind. 59 seconds remaining. You know, we need to make special mention to Lano here in the heat of the final minute of the game. Fred Nunn, the field judge, retires after this game after 31 years of service to college football. How about that? Congratulations to you, Fred. Enjoy. Enjoy the enjoy 
enjoy yourself after <laughs> after tonight. Let's keep our attention on the game. Nick's getting pressure and going down. Curtis Gordon and Nick Davis. Steve Busoletti all in the backfield. 47 seconds remaining in the game. A loss of 20, maybe 25, all the way back to the 34, or check that, from the 34, all the way back to the 17-yard line. Frank Sadler with the headset on there, working on the gum and working with Stan Nix, his quarterback. Buddy Nix, the head coach, stepping in. We'll see at least three split ends for UTC on this formation. Fourth down and 25. That's Tomley Spangler working with his defensive backs. Talking to Clint Averett, number 14, with his back to us. David Saunders working with the defensive line. Buddy Nix very calm in the face of the final 47 sec seconds of the ball game and in the face of what might be the final play, the most important play for UTC. Well, let's set it up. Fourth down and 25. Moccasins trail 23-20 with 47 seconds left in the game. Four wide receivers split for Nix. Last time, looking for Acre. Giles is back there. Intercepted or batted down. Incomplete pass. Mark Giles knocked it away with some help, and that's the ball game. Thirty-seven seconds remaining. The fans here at Chamberlain Field picking up their blankets and winter coats and heading to the exits. The Georgia Southern fans making the trip all the way from Statesboro up here to Chattanooga. Tim Stowers Club on target right now, leading 23 to 20, trying to close out their sixth consecutive win. Trying to go to seven and three on the season. Gross has McGee and Joe Ross behind him. He's just going to down the ball. There's a flag to stop the huddle clock. Stick with us at the end of this game. We'll be talking with a couple of the Georgia Southern players. Eagles are the defending national champs. And if you're looking ahead to the playoffs, Eastern Kentucky's the favorite. Colonels went in the Statesboro and came from behind to beat the Eagles. Georgia Southern also lost to third-rated Middle Tennessee, but the Eagles likely to see one of those two opponents somewhere along the line if all three continue to play as they are at this stage of the season. March the ball five yards forward, but still Raymond Gross just going to get on a knee and let that clock do its work. Joe Ross will be remembered for this game. 18 yards with a minute and a half remaining. Gross marched the team from his own 38 down to the 18 on some bullseye passing. He was four of seven. Check that, five of seven on the drive. That set up Joe Ross from 18 yards, the big play. And that's why the Eagles will walk away from Chattanooga with a 23 to 20 win. Tim Stowers will walk across the field and shake hands with Buddy Nix, the man who was involved in recruiting Tim Stowers back in the 70s when Stowers played at Auburn University. Well, we'll come back here to Chamberlain Field, wrap up this game, take a look at some highlights. We'll have interviews down on the field when we return from Chattanooga after this, the Eagles win their sixth in a row.
After nearly three and a half hours of tightly fought football, Georgia Southern beats Uni the University of Tennessee Chattanooga 23 to 20. Joe Ross rushes for a pair of touchdowns for Georgia Southern. A one yard leap back in the first half and then the big play of the game. 18 yards with just 132 remaining in the contest. We'll take a play at, we'll take a look at that play. Raymond Gross with his passing moves the Eagles down the field and it breaks wide open. Miguel Ayub, Rex Nottage, Rusty Parrish, the offensive line sets it up. John Wilson, the right guard, also blowing that hole wide open. Joe Ross was the Walter Payton Award candidate, the leading candidate for that award at the beginning of the season. He's had an off year by Joe Ross standards, but he's standing by right now with our Delano Little. Let's go down to the field to Delano. Thanks a lot, Phil. A tremendous total team effort here for Georgia Southern. Two of the bigger parts, Raymond Gross, Joe Ross standing beside me. We'll talk with Ross first. Sometimes it just doesn't look like you might be accomplishing what you want to accomplish in that fullback position. And then all of a sudden, boom, at the most opportune time, you score the touchdown. Let's type offense we have here. We um you know, we, we, we play with the big play, no matter what. You know, we're not a grind them out team. We try to have the big play to win it all, and that's what happened here today. We talked about the field conditions a lot during our telecast. Uh, how was it to you? Uh, I think it, it slowed down our team a little bit. You know, we, like I said, we're a quickness team, and the mud and all the slipping slowed down our team a little bit. But I tell you what, Joe, you made it look easy on that last play, and you're cutting well, recovering from that knee injury. We wish you the best of luck the rest of the season. Also joining me, Raymond Gross. You did it against... West Virginia, the Marshall uh, herd, thundering herd, and here you come here today, and you do it against Tennessee Chattanooga. Well, you know, uh, I think our coaches are getting a little confident in our two-minute two offense, and I think the guys know that we can do it, and uh, we just dropped back and passed the ball when we had to. Uh, I think, you know, that's a big part of the team. If you can come back and win it in the clutch, and we've won two like that this year, and it, it can't do anything but help us. What's going on in your mind on that last drive? The first two passes fall incomplete. What are you thinking now? Well, uh, I just, you know, I was overthrowing. I was, uh, you know, wasn't set my feet. And it's kind of hard to do it out here on the, in, in this type of condition. But, uh, you know, I knew that we had to have it on third down. And, you know, I got it to Carl. And, you know, Carl can make something happen after you get the ball to him. Were you surprised at all with the last call that scored the touchdown? You've been throwing, been throwing. And then all of a sudden, you fool them and you go to the option. Were you surprised with the call? Well, you know, uh, it's part of our offense. You lull them and you lull them. You know, in two-minute offense, people are always expecting to pass. And, you know, we just decided, coaching them made a good call and called the option. And, we got it to the first phase, and that's all we needed to do. One more question to you, Raymond. The offensive line, a tremendous job today for them? Yeah, they're, they're, they're just improving every week. Uh, the offensive line is, is getting better, and, you know, those guys are playing with a lot more confidence, and we're playing with a lot more confidence behind them. Uh, you know, in the, at the beginning of the season, they were a question mark, but those guys have, have grown up during the course of the season, and I think they can only get better. I know you have just a little time to celebrate, but then you have to start looking toward the Sanford Bulldogs. What do you think about those guys? Well, we're going to go home and start to film and you know just prepare ourselves the way we have been uh go out and practice hard all week and be back in the friendly confines of paulson stadium next week raymond gross it takes one more win good luck to you the rest of the season a tremendous game for raymond gross leading his team down the field for the winning touchdown against the university of tennessee chattanooga back up to you phil